And we are live. Welcome to the show where Adam is fiddling with his wires and to figure out, hopefully he doesn't lose any kind of signal or, or do you have, do we have mic check on Adam? Mic check. Okay, we're good. Mic check. I can usually tell before you because I can see the power light on your microphone and usually that goes out when it, uh, when you lose connection. Well, I tried to, can you still see the power light? Oh, on the back one. Yeah, that's right there. Yeah. That white light there that goes out when you lose the connection. So I'm like, uh oh, he's gone. (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah it, it happens i don't know why this does this so for some reason i think oh that's off a little bit um youtube like uh the the time stamp or the time frame area whatever you want to call it um mm-hmm. it's slower than real time so like if i'm playing youtube at regular speed it slowly gets behind i don't know why so if i go to click on the actual youtube video the stream and watch mm-hmm. it it slowly starts going backwards in time, not backwards in what time, but it's slow. It's, it's almost like you're watching the stream at like 0.9 speed. So it's close to real speed, but it's a little bit slower. So that like when every once in a while I go and click on it and I notice the stream feed is like two minutes behind after about an right. hour. And it's like, why is it doing that? I don't, it always does that. It's been doing that for as long as I can remember. So. But yeah, yeah. I've, I've noticed that a few times to get in there and be like, why the fuck is it so far behind? Because yeah. most of the time when we're doing this, I'm watching um, Discord so I can watch whoever the guest is. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, but that's that's always something that's bothering me because I always like to like, if I'm, you know, want to check on how the stream looks from a stream standpoint, I have to like mm-hmm. constantly fast forward it. Um, but <laughs> that being said, dude, so can you see the image yet? Now, mind you, I haven't played with lighting yet for the camera um yeah it's i would say your light lighting's a little bright um personally and i would and i would probably bring the camera up a little bit so the camera is at about shoulder level right now um and i can go up a little bit i don't know how much i want to go up because i kind of like the camera on the table because i had the cam my last camera above me and i hated the Mm -hmm. down look um for some reason i don't know why it just bothers me um I don't mind this particular angle. I could raise it like a couple inches, but nothing too crazy. However, yeah, no. what I what I have the issue I have with lighting is, and I, I've kind of like it almost, and it gives me like a two face look because I'm looking at it <laughs> as I'm speaking. But I have the blue light on my right side, which I can't turn that off. The on air sign is one color. It's not like a programmable light where I can change it. And right. cameras, no matter what camera it is they all struggle to capture blue light correctly. It like it washes out the image reds. All the other colors don't do that. It's just blue. Um, and then I have my actual key light next to me. I could put the key light in front of me, but I don't know. I I've just kind of grown to liking this lighting, even though it's not considered good lighting. I don't know why I just, I sort of like it. It's weird, but hey, um, whatever, whatever works for you. Yeah. But this, this is the cool feature. Hold on. Ready? Okay, now the camera's officially going to follow me. Oh, I'm, I'm super far right behind, now. so give me a second. Yeah. Yep. This isn't actually the camera following me. I hired a camera crew to just follow my face no matter where I go. <laughs> down here, and go up here, and stand up. I'm still, I'm still watching YouTube to find it. And oh, there it goes. <laughs> yeah, it's it's super cool. I so this was the camera that I wanted. I've wanted to get for a while now, and I just, I don't even know why, because it's not expensive. It's it's two hundred and fifty bucks without the tripod, and I'm not even. I bought it with the tripod, so it was two eighty, and I'm not even using the tripod. So I guess for like a more mobile situation, like if I want to go yeah. somewhere, the tripod's useful. But I actually stuck it to my uh, my monitor arm. Um, but it it is pretty. So let me recenter myself where I want it, and then I I literally. Do you have controls on the on the software side of things, like where you can just position the camera differently? Yeah, yeah, you can do all that manually. Or you can just sort of have it track your face to where you want it to go and then hit stop. The stop is literally like you throwing your hand in the air, like stop. And it, oh, and it will the stop chasing you around. But uh, no, it's, it's actually really cool. So for anybody in chat watching and, you know, listening, uh, I highly recommend if you are doing any kind of streaming where you are in the image and you care about the way the image looks, um, cause obviously podcasts are, are audio and, focused and you'll be moving around a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now mind you, if you're sitting in a chair, you don't have to have it follow you. I have it locked just because, you know, why not? But it's there in case I was doing something where I was moving around or whatever, but I know certain people might get sick from that and 
you know, little <laughs> camera seasick action. But um, that being said, though, um, the camera is amazing and it's tiny. I, I'm talking like it's the size of like a half dollar. It is yeah. so small, and and this because it's got a really because it's got a legitimate like action camera sensor in it. Um, so it's actually rendering also too because it's considered a webcam and not just like a go like a another camera. Uh, for example, like the GoPro you're using, it doesn't matter which one you use. Um, it will always the GoPro app makes it a 1080p image no matter what. It could be a 4K camera, 8K camera, doesn't matter. It's gonna make it 1080p no matter what. Um, whereas sure. this is this one's actually 4K. Um, and it's a, got a really good sensor in it, so it, it the image just looks good. Um, but that being said, that was a bit of a rant. No, it's not a it's not necessarily a rant because that's kind of what this podcast is going to be about. Sure, we're going to talk sure. a little bit about race weight, and then we're going to start and get into a little little bit of tech and some mm -hmm. shit that's coming out and just what it, it is. What it is. I mean, the the race world. We as much as we're not tech people, or I'm not. I'm clearly not a tech guy, but it's extremely important if you want to have you know great videos and good mm -hmm. audio and shit like that. Yeah, you kind of at least got to follow along with it a, a oh. sl just a smidge. Yeah, agreed. And and that's kind of like you know that's everybody always asks me like you know about bikes and and hobbies and bikes aren't my hobbies they're they i enjoy them still but it used to be my hobby it's not my hobby anymore it's become my job whereas you know tech stuff has always been my actual sort of Whoa. like what all oh, the screen flash there yeah i'm watching youtube so it like it that was that was my bad because i'm capturing the image in front of me and mm. i accidentally just populated that image with youtube page um but uh that being said, though, um, is his head shinier than usual? No, I mean, I, I cut my hair once every two weeks, but there is a big-ass key light on my forehead, yeah. on my head. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sure there's going to be some comments. Yeah. Oh, well, fuck it. Uh, so, yeah, for the ones that, that didn't catch it, that's the Insta... What do they call that oh, thing? So it's, it's the Insta360 link. I can actually... I'll pull it up. I gotcha. Uh, and you said that was like sub 300 with a tripod, right? Yeah. Now, mind you, I got it on Amazon and I do think there was a, cause they released the X4 yesterday. So I think there's like a global Insta, uh, discount. Now mm. it might just be a permanent, uh, price reduction or what, but either way, pull it up. Shit. Just have to throw it on the screen here for you guys. Hold on. Hey, I will say, if anything, that light gives you a little bit of shadow on your forearm so you see the muscle fibers. Right, right. Way to, way to go, buddy. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Perfect. You know, let's do it because I don't have the bicep veins yet, but like the blue <laughs> light versus the regular white light has created a fake line there that makes it look like I got it. I don't. <laughs> One day, maybe in six, maybe another uh, six months that I've never had, for some reason, I don't know why, I've, no matter the best shape of my life or not, I've never had the bicep vein. That's funny. It's all about um, uh, faking it until you make it, right? Yes, exactly. And we're just, we're just following suit with the rest of the YouTubers. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> no, I'm getting it. That's, that's, my, that's, well, that's one of the many goals I have for uh, this subject there you that go. we'll talk about in a second. So anyway, here we go. Let's pop this up. Oh, you're going to throw it on the screen? Yeah, let's get my face off there. Uh, boom. All right, so this is the, uh, this is it. It's, I mean, I, I wish I could explain how small this is. This thing I thought was going to be substantially bigger than it is. And all those times that, like, back in the day when the 360 stuff first came out and people were, like, making things where it followed people on bikes, they're like, how is the camera tracking you? No, it's not. It's right. just us doing that. No, this camera actually tracks you. Yeah, that's that's pretty dope. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, no, I'm not in. Go away. Crystal clear 4K. Blah blah blah. Okay. Anyway. Um. Yeah. Either way. Yeah. That's uh. It's a it's a badass camera. So if I wanted to go to buy now, right on their website. Yeah. So you can see it was 300. Now it's it's 250. So yeah. And then with the tripod is 278. So nice. it's it's hard. Like I I can tell you my other options for something that looked this good was going to be like a $1,500 camera DSLR. That would have been a total waste of a camera to be considered a webcam, you know? Just sit, just sit there and use it once a week. Exactly, exactly. But so. the picture would be dope. Yes, although I don't <laughs> know how much better it would be than what you see here. Because this is that's, <laughs> really? that's a legit image. I mean, I had my, my last camera, my first one was a DSLR, which was, uh, but it was an old one. It was a T, it was a, uh, $800 budget. Why well, I say $800 budget, but if in the camera world, right. that's a budget camera. 
Um, and, uh, I had that, I bought that camera. Jesus. I don't, I don't even know. I want to say 20, 2016 or so I bought that camera and it's been, I took some pictures with it and then it became a streaming camera. Um, yeah. but that would always be 1080p. Um, this has a way better image and it's like a fraction of the size and there's no setup. You plug it into your computer and it just works. It's all, all those features where like, you know, you can make it track you and stuff. That's all built into the camera it has nothing to do with any softwares. It's a little terrifying there, right? I mean, you know, we, we focus on AI cause we grew up around Terminator and all the bad <laughs> things that could come from AI, but it's. All it, all AI is is technology where it I don't I don't even know I I think we overuse the word A or the, the acronym AI because mm -hmm. it it isn't AI it's not a a, a self thinking self learning computer or anything like that it is in Terminator where it can take over the world um it could be but I Let will me dream but I but I will say I don't know if you have ever seen the uh, uh, I Robot with Will Smith mm -hmm. so in that movie there's the three laws about like with robots and artificial intelligence, those are real to not, I don't Now I am paraphrasing on the exact wording of them, but like there are three, hang on, three laws, either of robotics <laughs> or AI. Um, yeah. So, uh, Isaac Asimov's three laws of robotics are set are a set of hypothetical guidelines for how robots should operate. They first appeared in, in his 1942 short story Runaround and have since become influential in the sci-fi genre. The laws are, maybe it's fake, maybe I'm just bullshit. But <laughs> um, I will say though, okay, so a, a robot may not harm a human being or allow a human being to become, to harm through inaction. A robot must obey orders given to given to it by humans, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. Uh, a robot must protect its own existence, except where such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. But anyway, we're hmm. going way down a rabbit hole here, but I'm pretty confident. I can't rabbit remember. Holes are I, fun. I, I'm pretty confident that those are real though, in terms of all, those are three laws that are actually put into, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm full of shit. Who knows? I'd have to I'd have to look that more into that to confidently say that that is a not just something that I thought up in in, in sleeping or something. Hey, who uh, it sounded good. I liked yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh. That being said, though. Um. So let's 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 shift gears, uh, because that's a tangent we can keep talking about. Um. Let's talk more about well, you realistically, uh, and I. I I hate focusing it on me. I really do. Like oh. it's just annoying. But it is what it is. Um, but I do. I don't like to be in center of attention. Mm -hmm. You well, know. Guess what? This this podcast <laughs> is featuring you. So it says so in the title. Oh, uh, it's not the first one. Either way. Uh, well, for the most part, everybody knows that me and you both have like basically. I don't know how. What are you up to total weight drop right now? Um, you, as of last. Just ballpark it, I mean, I guess. As of last week, uh, 32 pounds is like the more specific number. But I mean, I don't like to really go to individual numbers like that simply because your body weight can fluctuate so much. It's hard to, I try and oh, yeah. just like when you're dragging a motorcycle, I try and rule out all the anomalies when I weigh in. So I don't want to weigh in one week where I'm, you know, I just ate a meal or yeah. I'm, you know, holding some extra weight I know I have or, and then the next week, you know, weigh in when I'm completely sucked dry and be like, Oh, I lost that much weight this week. Cause guess what? If you go to weigh yourself, that's why I like, I always try and tell people too, like, if you want to know what you weigh, weigh yourself in both scenarios, weigh yourself after like a healthy meal where you've had some drinks, water, whatever, just the, the actual physical liquid. Um, and then weigh yourself when you're, you're empty. And that'll kind of tell you what your body swings, uh, with just what it holds. You know? Right. And that's what I was telling you today. Like, so today I, I would count it somewhat officially that I have hit my goal of 179 and I'm, I've stayed that since your house. Yeah. So I wake up and, you know, I'm, I don't fluctuate too bad. I did that one day, but we ate. Uh, we ate. So it is what it is. But, you know, for the most part, I keep track on it. So overall, I don't know what total because I unfortunately did not weigh on my first day when I started the 75 hard stuff. Yeah. Um, But, I, you know, the best I can ballpark it is it's I was about 210 when I started. So um, but it's funny 
how that even got started. So let's see, me and you went to uh, TRC's race, and I think I weighed in with my suit on was like 222, right? Without a helmet, I think, I or gloves. I think so. Um, somewhere in there, somewhere in there. And uh, I don't know, it, it didn't bother me. Like, it, it was kind of like, all right, whatever, I care. I thought I cared to weight well. Well, you, and, and not for nothing, before you started this program, you had been... St- slowly more much more casually getting in shape from several years like when i like you like you at this current like call it 210 that you were at before trc and before because you were at that that same weight um dude all i right, want to say it not, I like eaves matt matt isn't in here but he loves to tell the fucking story about the time i lost my fucking wallet in my fat roll <laughs> <laughs> in Twin Peaks, and that's that's what he calls it. That's not exactly what happened, but we we were at Twin Peaks eating, and I went to the bathroom, and somehow my wallet had ended up over or like between my belt and my skin itself, so I couldn't feel it. <laughs> and I, dude, I was freaking out. Like I was like, "Who the fuck stole my wallet? Like this is bullshit." And we're almost getting ready to be like completely done with it. Actually, I had somebody pay for my meal and I just cashed out the money or something like that. And then we get on the bikes and I was like, oh, shit, I found my wallet. And I want to say about that time, dude, I had to have been 225 to 230. Yeah. Yeah. So like at at one point I'd gotten disgustingly big for myself. When did you start lifting again? Um, cause you've been lifting pretty casually, I would say for a couple of years now. Um, uh, yeah, yes and no. I'm not saying I, religiously, I, I'm saying casually. No, no. Well, I mean, it's kind of one of those things that like I got woke up at two thirty something. And I'm like, what the fuck happened? You know what yeah. I mean? Um, and it, and it just kind of cycled. I had some, some life changes, uh, some, some changes with housing situation, whatever. Um, shit that I'm not even going to bring up. I really, it's not even worth it. Yeah. But, my, you know, you were there. You mm-hmm. you were part of that. So, or not part of that by any means, but you were were there yeah, through it. So, my life flipped upside down. I was like, man, I gotta I gotta get back and just just being a bit better, decent, whatever. Mm-hmm. And it started and started working out, lifting shit like that. And like you said, it was all casual. And like I've got a picture in Brox's office. Um, and I was like, damn, I thought I looked pretty decent in that picture. Well, and now looking back at it, and it's like, oh, you know? Let me, um, let me see if I can bring up some pictures while you're talking. You can keep talking. Um, oh, okay. Of, like, but yeah. That I might have. So, <laughs> and you have the fucking luxury picture of me with the EJR shirt on. Oh, well, I, I'm not going to show that picture. <laughs> Don't worry about that. That one is fucking disgusting. Um, but reg- regardless. Um, yeah, it just it is what it is. Kept chipping away at it. Felt pretty good. And like, don't get me wrong, I, I wasn't even upset with where I was at. But I'd been listening to another podcast, uh, which is where that seventy five hard originates from. And I listen. I've been listening to it pretty religiously for about it's eight years now. I think mm-hmm. maybe seven. E- either way, it fuzzy right in there. But I want to say six, seven, eight years uh, yep. yeah either way regardless um so anyway i'd been wanting to do it and i talked to a few people i had a few friends that done it and they were like oh man that's great it's great you should do it and i just kept telling myself like no fuck right like i don't want to do this shit like i I'm, I'm getting in better shape like what i'm doing is working and it was and it january 1st rolled around and i you know um had a Great day, did nothing. Watched movies and fucked off and, you know, did whatever. I, I really don't remember exactly what all the deta- the, the day um, had in store for it or whatever or, or what was done. Mm-hmm. But I remember at 11 o'clock at night just being like, fuck, I am miserable. Yeah. I don't know why. I was just pissed. And it, the company that was around me, I had no disrespect to them, but I was just like, I'm fucking leaving. I'm done with this bullshit. It just, bye. And... And it was like, it was kind of weird, but I woke up the next day and started 75 hard. So to backtrack just a little bit, 75 hard challenge uh, consists of um, two meal, uh, sorry, two workouts a day. One has to be outside, rain, sleet, snow, thunderstorm, whatever. It's got to be outside. Um, you got to stick to a diet. You've got, fuck, just so I don't fuck this up, let me actually 
quote it because I, I had to look at this shit pretty can regularly. You, can you elaborate too on like the workouts? Because like working out outside, could that be a walk or is that like a, you know, Dude, it, rocky yeah, training it can be, for Drago? Like, now, okay. So can it be a walk? Yes. Can it be a fucking leisurely pace? No, fuck that. Yeah. Like you got to have sustained heart rate at least mm -hmm. up to 120, you know, all that good trash. You got to push yourself. You, But I'll tell you right now, like you don't even second guess it. Once you start doing it, you're yeah. like, fuck it. I'm not going to, you know what I mean? It just, it was for me anyway. It's like, uh, you know, I'll push myself that extra distance. So for the, pro for the program, it is, it's two 45 minute workouts. One must has to be outdoors. Follow a diet. No alcohol or cheat meals. Drink a gallon of water a day. Read 10 pages of a non-fiction non -fiction book. Audio books do not count. And then take a progress picture. Mm -hmm. Now, the the workouts a day, I, you know, Evan, like you said, I was already working out. I was already going to the gym I'm going at now pretty regularly, like felt pretty good. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, this isn't going to be that big of a deal. All I got to do is work out one more time. Dude, there's days um, that sucked. Like yeah. when I went, when I went snowboarding, I didn't know if snowboarding counted as a workout. So after snowboarding for like eight hours, I, uh, I walked around the fucking park. Well, hold on. I'll take that back. So I woke up that morning and walked up and down the mountain for 45 minutes mm -hmm. and then, um, then went snowboarding all day, drove home. And then just because I wasn't sure I lifted weights, yeah. um, for another 45 minutes, you know, just, just to make sure the diet. It, dude, it, the greatest part about this is it leaves it open to what works the best for your schedule, but it cannot, like, you you can't you can't cheat with it, right? Yeah. Like, so whatever you pick, you have to pick and you have to stick with it for your 75 days. Mm -hmm. um, as we and you've talked about, I did intermittent fasting, and I kind of still do within, within reason. Um, the no alcohol for me was fucking easy. That's not that big a deal. Yeah. Dr drinking a gallon of water, yet again was already there because I've like I've incorporated a lot of this shit throughout the years like oh well this program follows a lot of you know you drink a lot of water so I was drinking a lot of water thinking oh this is the secret to losing weight right it's not so no, no. I was like <laughs> so I was like fuck all right cool and it's just good it, to do it, it it is good to do it is good to it is to, it's good to do if you realize what you're doing and I'm not saying I realize what I'm doing but I've realized over the progression of this that just slamming half a gallon of water in the morning does absolutely fucking nothing for you right yeah. like you have to make yourself drink a gallon of water throughout yeah. the day for it to actually do anything yeah, or maintain most, most of that water too that you you if you chugged a gallon without throwing up would just make you piss out you know uh, seven eighths of a gallon and absorb yeah. the other eight. it's it's best realistically to just well as you know to sip water all day just sip it yeah that's how you rehydrate. And, that's how you, that's how you actually, if you are retaining water, ironically from like, say too much sodium, sipping water is the fastest way to flush out that sodium bloat, which mm -hmm. it seems, it seems back asswards, uh, to, you know, say, oh, to release water weight, you have to drink water. It's like, huh? I don't, that doesn't make any sense to me, but <laughs> it's, it's just like anything else. You know, you get, how do you wash away salt on the ground? It's not going to go away on its own. You got to flush it out, you know, mm -hmm. um, but it's the same way. You can't just chug water. You have to sip water and you have to sip yeah, it pretty it, consistently. And, and you know, Evan, like I carry, I've carried this one container around. It's all beat to hell. I don't, <sighs> I don't know how many times I dropped it at your house, right? Mm -hmm. When we were just painting the garage. Well, it's warped in the bottom, so it doesn't stay flat. Yeah, it, it, well, it does now. I've hit, I've hit it with a hammer a few times. So, <laughs> but either way, regardless, I mean, it, like I said, these all things were things I was doing. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. So we we'll keep going. And then on the second, I jumped up and started like, fuck this. I'm doing it regardless. I'm not failing. I'm not cheating. I'm not. I'm just gonna stick to this because it's like I started thinking about it's like 75 days. Like, what is 75 days in the grand scheme of things, right? Like. I kept telling myself, Hey, I want to, I want to cut weight for the TRC event. And I, and I did decent for TRC, right? Like I, I, I pulled some weight off of me and I was like, ah, it's still not where I need to be. So boom, 75 days, like I said, isn't shit in the long run of things. Um, the worst part is after your 75 days, you'll want to keep going because you're not, you're, you're just, it's well, so it's ingrained happened. you've in done you. it for yeah, so 75 days straight. It's hard to, yeah, there's nothing, there's not a lot of things the human uh, brain can do for 75 days in a row and then just shut off after 75 days. That's yeah, going to be exactly. one of those things where you, 
have developed the habit of doing that now where you have to now stay conscious of if you want to like continue it without like doing the program, but like making sure you're doing that, you have to stay conscious of that because what'll happen is you'll slowly slip out. You know, let's say you have to do a walk or something like that. You may be like, ah, I don't really feel like walking today and you'll walk tomorrow and you will walk tomorrow, but you won't walk that day. Next thing you know, you've skipped three walks in a week. Four <laughs> walks. Next thing you know, you're just not walking at all. And now you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're no longer fat. You're following like, oh, well, it's just a, you know, a uh, hundred calories in the middle of my fast. Yeah. But in, in technically it's that that's a hundred calories. It's going to completely reset what's happening during that fast, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, also, mind you, like I had like horrible joint pain during this. I had acid reflux like a motherfucker prior to this. And then because of my schedule, you know, I, I go into work at noon. So I just I was like, fuck it. If I'm not at work, I'm not eating. Mm -hmm. So I made it myself where I was just from 12 to, to 8 o'clock at night. So don't get me wrong. There was some nights I was like, this sucks. I mean, even in Miami, like now that's another thing that that a lot of people don't realize. I started this and still went to Miami. Mm -hmm. uh, I've went, dude, I've, I've actually traveled. I've been blessed the, for the beginning portion of this year. So like, it's a little aggravating, but you know, got up, walked in the mornings or read or whatever. And you just, you just keep at it. Like, I, I don't know. It's, it's hard. It's really hard not to be like, yeah, you know, it, once you, once you get down to your mind and, and think about it, I will say the two hardest things for me and one of them, you're going to fucking laugh your ass off, but taking a progress picture every morning sucks. Like I oh, am yeah. not, but I am not. How you know. Oh, uh, dude, I'm so glad I've done it because, um, I haven't posted it. Cause I just. Oh, you, you, you lost your mic. light came I back like, there you go you're good licked it. I, I barely touched it it's time to use your good laptop that is a hundred percent accurate <laughs> um, i have no argument there so um fuck lost my train of thought oh uh progress pictures so yeah. like i'm not i'm not that person that wants to post your your you know progress online or whatever like it's very weird for me to post especially because one thing I didn't mention in this progress picture is you basically damn near have, you don't have to do it um, with limited clothes on, but it makes a lot more sense when you do, because it, it they have to be form fitting so you can see your progress. Mm -hmm. But if you do it in like a pair of boxers, um, you can really start seeing everything. So yeah, yeah I'm not going to post that online, yeah. but the progression of that is like, holy yeah. shit. So that was unbelievably hard for me. Like it just felt weird doing it. I did. I didn't like it. I struggled with it the whole time. It was just, it was ridiculous. Well, that's the thing too. Like, cause it like, even now too, I still, you know, cause the more I, I'm actually after losing 32 pounds, I'm just gonna say 30. Cause saying 32 is so weird. Uh, after losing 30 pounds, like, I think I'm almost less comfortable with my shirt off now than I was before him because I'm conscious of my efforts of trying to fix what I've let myself go to, you know? Yeah. So back when I was out of shape and wasn't paying attention, didn't, my OCD hadn't kicked in yet for like trying to get in shape. It was like, whatever, I'm fat. I'm just, I'm fat. Like I am not, I have, I have, uh, accepted being fat, which I think is probably one of the worst things you can do, uh, as just staying healthy except in that oh i'm old i'm fat it's whatever no i mean you know i, I look at it like i'm 36 and i have I, I i look at all the guys that are in their 40s 50s and even 60s that are in substantially better shape than me or <laughs> if not possibly in the best shape of their life and i know that stupid you know expression gets thrown around i'm in the best shape of my life because people say it all the time when they start to get in shape but like mm -hmm. I'm at a point now where like, you know what? I think I want to do that. And I think I can easily get in better shape than I was when I was wrestling in high school and college, simply because when I was wrestling in high school and college, yes, I had youth on my side, but I had no diet. I was literally eating garbage food 24 seven. And I was just in shape because to. of my physical activity, you know? Yeah. But yeah, you didn't have to, when you're then everything worked so much yeah, easier, it's yeah. nicer. <laughs> but the thing is, is now is that being so much more educated and, and conscious of what I put in my system and how I do it and the order I do it and, and, and stuff like that and what each nutrient actually does. Um, I, I really truly don't think it would be very hard. This, the progress that I've made so far has not been hard. 
it's actually Dude. been quite easy um just you know and that's battling age that's battling joint pains that's yeah. which all of that stuff has gotten better so saying like you know let's just say because i started at 205 um that's like usually 200 to 205 is like my breaking point where like you know because i always want to get in shape but i never i i always want to be a piece of shit and more than i want to get in shape and i want to eat a pizza i want to eat ice cream i want to <laughs> and you've just ingrained those habits from doing it long term that like that's what i truly want to do however when i get to that breaking point of like that 200 to 205 i truly want to get in better shape more than i want to eat the pizza you know and yeah. then once i do it for so long i don't i don't care i want to continue getting i want to like so I want to stay in shape. I want to, my goal is to get to a certain point and then, and do, and practice maintenance. And the only way to practice that maintenance is pay attention to it. That's all, you know, you can't well, main, let things maintenance. Go. Yeah. Maintenance gets so much harder, especially older. Like that's another thing. And, and not a lot of people grab that, but you know, we're getting older. She gets start slowing down. It is what it is. We're still trying to race with people that are fucking 21 years old that, that can eat a whole pizza and still yeah. be, you know, gain no weight and shit yeah. like that. So, well, you know, it just, it just, it's not a whole, like you said, it's not a whole lot of effort. I, once you realize, once you realize like what all you necessarily have to do, it's like, eh, okay. What if I, what's, what's so hard? Like, why haven't I been doing this? Yeah. Well, so that's the thing though, right? Like the, the best way to look at like getting in shape is because obviously everybody wants it as fast as possible. I do, you do, we all do. Every human being wants to be in the, they want to be able to snap their fingers and they look like the, the, the specimen they've always wanted to be obviously. Um, however, you know, I, I am doing a, a much slower way than you are. Um, for example, I have, you know, probably real quick before to interrupt myself. Um, since I know you just answered Hunter, I was want to mention that too, uh, regardless of 75 hard, regardless of whatever thing you're doing, calories, your intake determines weight loss or weight gain. That's just that, that is the, the fact of, of the human body. It doesn't matter. You could be a complete machine and you're not going to grow muscle in, unless you're putting in the right calories and, and enough of those Dude, calories it's, too. It's, it's so annoying. Like it is fucking the absolutely most annoying thing that I've heard over and over and over in the, the fitness industry. Um, because I, I like, you know, I watch a lot of this stuff or I listen or read and, and stuff like that. And everybody, even in the beginning stages, when I started saying, everybody's like, oh, it's all about the diet. It's all about the diet. And I'm like, man, fuck that shit. I'm just going to eat a little better and just work harder. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, I've passed my 75 days. I've, I've hit my goal weight. Everything's great. And you know what? It's the fucking diet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, it's 100%. It's, the the it's only reason so you want to work out is so you don't you can kind of sculpt yourself to just not get skinny fat because yeah. when you're dieting, you're burning muscle and fat. You're just burning depending. It depends on the, how much actual, uh, you have of each. So if you have a lot more fat than you do have muscle and you go on a diet, like an actual calorie, let's just call it a calorie deficit. I hate the word diet because it can mean so many things. Like you could be, you could be on a diet and, being a calorie surplus and it's intentional because you're eating the right things. Um, well, I was about but, to say it's all on what your goal is. That's yeah. kind of leads back to Hunter's question where he was like, can you do it and gain weight? You absolutely yeah. can. But, um, I wouldn't do it eating pizza kind of like, like I would be focused on, you know, the right calories to, and, and then, you know, cause like, if, you're, if you're trying to gain weight, dude, it's going to be, uh, you know, if you're trying to gain weight from muscle, I assume. Yeah. It's always, it's always harder to produce muscle during a fast because when your body goes into, you know, I hate to say ketosis. I hate that. I hate, I hate, I hate keto. All I the hate the words. whole thing, the whole pro <laughs> that, that keto and, and, and gluten-free when it's not a, an actual allergy is the most like you, like you going on a gluten-free diet is without having a gluten allergy is doing absolutely nothing for your health. You're just following a fad that doesn't matter. Um, nah. I mean, it will, it could, it could help your gut. I'm not going to lie. It would, but that would be an allergy gut. then. If, if you, if you visit, if there is an ailment from, it could be, there's obviously, you know, severities to the allergies, but right. like if you you go from having gluten and, and, and your throat closing up and you die to you get a stomach ache to, uh, I got, I'm a little gassy or whatever. These are all, you know, <laughs> things happening from right. whatever the, uh, the, the gluten is. But like, realistically me, if I avoid like my, 
I, I'm gluten positive. I need to have my gluten <laughs> or my, my gut. I mean, trust me, my gut is, is very sensitive to many different things. Gluten is not one of them. Um, but, uh, that being said though, um, I, when I interrupted myself, I forgot where I was. <laughs> oh, who knew, who knew interrupting myself would lose my train of thought. Um, but no. So, um, all right, let's, let's go back to you for now. And then I'll talk about a little bit more about what I've been doing after that. Cause all I right. want to focus more on, on the 75 hard. And cause you've, like I said, you've been at it a lot. We started, so you started the 75 hard after yeah, I second. started. So I started going back to my regimen the middle of October and I started lifting the end of October. Um, and I've been doing the same, just about same thing the entire time. Um, and it's the same stepping stone trend, which the reason why I'm, well, I'm here, I am talking about me when I said to talk about you. No, 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 no. It, but you, you need to, because like you said, you can't just snap your finger and, and wish yeah. this shit away. Like it, it takes in, it takes in time. Like there's only so much weight you're going to be able to lose health healthy over a period of time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's just, it's just natural. Like I, you know, when, when I was struggling to get to my weight where I'm at now, like I was like, man, what the fuck? Like, what, what am I doing wrong? What, what's going on this? What's this? What, you know, and you just, you just put in, you just got to give it time. You got to keep doing the fucking work and it, results will eventually come. Yeah. So it's, it's all part of the scheme, but, or not scheme. Scheme is a wrong word for that. But yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, so I started on the uh, the 2nd of January, and I almost, and like, I'm a little butthurt that I didn't, no offense, but I call, I almost caught you. Like, we, there were there were times where we were really close to in weight, and I just didn't tell you, because I was like, I'm going to wait until I can fucking, like, <laughs> I got him, right? Like, I, that's a dick move, and I get it, and it just is what it is, but like, your you getting better was pushing me to go that much further. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, you so, still technically can because one thing you have you have almost a guarantee of is I am not going to be more than a pound to a pound and a half lighter every week. So, and I'm not going to change. I could lose more if I wanted to get extreme, but I'm not trying to be extreme because I'm trying to do the whole, you know, this is life. This is how I got to be in life. And then once I hit that maintenance, I literally like everything I'm doing right now. Once I hit maintenance, will be. I add a thousand calories to my di- uh, my way of eating every single day, except of the weekends because I'm already there. But like the <laughs> uh, Monday through Friday will no longer be fifteen hundred calories. It's going to go up to twenty five hundred calories. That's provided I continue to do everything the way I'm doing it right now. I'm doing right. I'm, I'm lifting five times a week, um, and I'm just living life outside of that. My workouts are not aggressive. My my longest workout I think was today, um, and it was thirty five minutes. And it was only because I like slightly procrastinated. I I waited more in between sets. That was about it. But it was more because Ah, I was like distracted with like emails and stuff while I was working out. Um, But like, that's another thing. Just put your phone down. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Um, But um, that's one of the biggest pet peeves with all this is like people get in the gym and it's like social hour. It's like, get the fuck away from me. That's why I hate the gym. No, no, you just look pissed all the time and don't talk to nobody. It works it works out great. Like <laughs> or, or talked, the cool thing to do is you go to the gym and take a picture of yourself in the mirror and post it up every single day on Instagram about how you're at the gym. Like all of a sudden you deserve some gratification for that from everybody. Or, or we've lifted weights for two weeks and oh look how strong I am, bro. Yeah. Like shut the fuck yeah, up. Nothing has like, happened in those in those two weeks except your body freaking the fuck up because you're doing something it hasn't done in a long time. Well, or I ever, mean, depending you, on who you are. You will start seeing shit in two weeks, but like you're where you're at, you should not be praising you've, the results. You've developed zero muscle fiber. You've literally just retained water in your <clears throat> muscles from shocking them. That's what's happened in two weeks. You haven't, if you stop, if you worked out for two weeks and then stopped again after about a week, you are right back to where you were like it never happened. Um, yeah. Also, let's just be completely honest posting um, a flexing picture or a shirtless picture on Instagram for a whole bunch of other dudes to like watch your story <laughs> is fucking weird. Is weird as shit. I'm sorry. Like it just it is. like it, I can see it if you uh, got like a bunch of a bunch of chicks on there or something. But yeah. it's fucking weird. Yeah. Um. But back to the 75 hard thing. So the you, the you progress hold on. Pre- you, you you go on a rant about that quick. I'm gonna make myself another coffee because I'm I'm getting parched and I need my coffee. So you go on. <laughs> I'll be right back. That's why you drink water, there, buddy. Well, um, I like my coffee while we're doing these. 
Mm. I missed my mouth, people. That just happened on TV. That happens a lot, by the way. Um, but yeah, part of the uh, the 75 hard, or last thing on that 75 hard was reading 10 pages. And um, I'm pretty sure you can still hear me, Evan, because if not, I feel like I'm just talking to nothing. But the um, reading 10 pages of a nonfiction book, like that right there is was was really crazy how how like shitty i was at reading like i've got i've got degrees i went through college i've I've got shit like that and i don't know how exactly i managed it but now considering i've i guess i've been out of school for so long that having to physically sit down and read something that's really not all that entertaining sucks so that was a struggle um but it was fun like i i kind of enjoyed it and that's something that i have retained but i don't do it daily unfortunately i've got to get myself back into it because um knowledge is power period that goes for everything that everything that you think you want to be involved in knowledge is power so um highly highly recommend that and then while evan's still making his coffee i'll just plug this in anybody that that is interested in the 75 hard thing feel free to message me or you know you can go listen to andy's podcast i want to say it's like episode 208 of the real AF, but um, if you don't message me, I'll sit here and chit chat, chit chat it up, and, and figure out what you need or what would work best for you. And we've actually, Evan, <clears throat> you're not part of this because you, well, let's face it, you don't use Instagram as much as the majority of the world. But there's a group of us that have a like a little daily check in, um, and we keep each other in line, we keep each other in check. To an extent, like, don't get me wrong, there's there's some guys that take it a little bit more hardcore than us or, or than me, but there are people out there that'll help you. I mean, if this is kind of what you're wanting to do, they, they will definitely help you um, kind of get your shit in order, so to speak. That was me. Like, I, it, it was really hard to realize how out of shape I was until I've, I've done the 75 five day thing. I've stuck with this. I've got a routine. And then I had a scan. Um, Evan, I'm pretty sure I sent you the files on it. Um, but when it showed, I was at 20, 21% body fat still. I was like, fuck how, yeah. how out of shape was I? Well, that's, that's what kind of was annoying. It's yeah. like, wow. So it's funny. You, uh, you, and by the way, I can't hear you. Like you said, I heard you the whole time. I just I wasn't, it wasn't on mic, but the headset was still on. Um, mm-hmm. so no, it's funny. You say that about the body fat. Now, mind you, I haven't had any kind of legitimate scan, which is, you know, I haven't done like you, there's multiple ways you can do it. I mean, I'm probably, I might consider getting the calipers. Um, but then I would obviously need Kelly's help for stuff like that. Um, but right. You know, so I'll, I've done the, the the regular measurement stuff that you can do yourself, where you measure your waist, you measure your neck, stuff like that. You you know, you have your all that stuff, um, and that I I based off of my weight and and just or I should say based off of what I know about me, my body, and be having had such a fluctuating body type throughout my life, um, I kind of know where I fall at at what weights. And you know, where I'm at working out, and I I get was guessing about 22 percent body fat is where I'm at now, and according to the the online calculator, um, <laughs> which algorithms tend to work for the most part, they're they're a math. good general rough idea. Math is crazy how it just works all the time. I know people hate math and they don't believe it. They they prefer to call it magic, but it's really just math. Um, but it said I was 21.9, so I'm like, oh well, okay. My guess was pretty good there because when I was 155, I or 100. That was probably well. You wrestled, like you you wrestled, so you always knew what your like. Yeah, yeah. For example, your wrestling, like we your always fighting weight is and stuff like that. We had to always, there was always a way to fool the system because the the thing is is that you always wanted to get lighter. You want to be able to go down into a weight class. And a lot of times the weight management stuff wouldn't let you. So like in the late latter half of my uh, wrestling career, a lot of the weight management stuff started getting more serious because when I first started, there was no weight management. So you could be 300 pounds. And if you could physically get to 103 pounds, I think it was 103 pounds uh, weight class by the weekend and shave 200 pounds of your body fat off, you could do it legally. Then they realized people could die and it was happening. So they were <laughs> right. like, all right, we need to have something in here. So basically we would have our like 
body fat. They would they would come in. They would do the calipers. They calculate our body fat, and then they would they would basically have a program for weight management that you could lose weight by this amount of time. So all you had to do was just dehydrate yourself like crazy before you actually did the weight management test. So you were down like ten pounds before. While well, you still retained all the body fat, obviously, because you didn't just stop drinking water and, and start spitting in a cup and your body fat go away. It was just water weight. <laughs> so um, we uh, would do it that way. And then the following year, they, they, you had to be hydrated. So they do the piss test as well. The piss test made it a lot harder because now you got to find that happy medium where you're hydrated and you can pass the scale or the, the, the you know, the, the color scale. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that was always a fun thing. Um, but I will, uh, I will say like, I, I hate that. I never took like that portion of like high school. Seriously. I played, I played sports. I was a football guy, but I didn't, I, I kind of wish I would have learned a lot more, you know, when you're in that 20 something, you know, or teenager, 20 something, like I, I was in the Marine Corps. I fucked off a lot in the Marine Corps as far as my, you know, my, my physical appearance goes because I was fucking 20. Like, it didn't matter. I could drink a handle the night prior and go run a PFT the next day and pass. Yeah. So like, who gave, Who gives this shit? That's like, let's youth. go. <laughs> that's the youth. And that's the thing, too. And that's what I was saying earlier about, like, I'm educated now about being in shape and how to do it the right way. Whereas when I was younger, I wasn't. So I was an ignorant idiot and just letting <laughs> athleticism do the work for me. You know, so... The reality, like, for example, like uh, no joke, like let's just, let's reference some of the high, cause I had some really bad habits in high school when it came to eating versus wrestling. If I, <laughs> Dude, I if, if I was wrestling 125 pounds and I weighed the day of a match, 124, even I would get, I knew that how many cookies I could have throughout the entire day of just cookies to be under 125 pounds to make weight. I would oh literally, God. if I had a pound leeway, I would fill it up with cookies. And I wasn't the only one. This was like, I'm like, I'm some idiot. The entire team would do this shit because we're all stupid oh, kids, yeah. you know? Well, because, and that's the thing is you're listening to your peers, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so this is where you're getting your information yeah. from. And it's, it's, it might be working, but yeah. it's probably. <laughs> and then when you run out of gas two minutes into the match, you realize those cookies ain't doing shit for you. That, that, that sugar rush left you a long time ago, you know? Um, oh, so, shit. you know, it's important to know how every nutrient, and that's why I hate why fat being called fat. Like it shouldn't be called fat because right. it, the, the average person associates, you know, the nutrient of fat, the Holy macro, shit. my favorite word. Um, sorry, sorry, but Goblin just put in, he, he went from 207 down to 169.5. I would say you've been doing work, sir. Nice job, sir. Congratulations. Holy fuck. Way to go. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I have been, yeah. I've had my, I'd, I would say in the time that I started, I'd say a solid month between, uh, the two vacations and then the two weeks following for maintenance to get back to where I was before. So I've lost about a month total. Um, because you have to understand too, when you go on vacation and you, let's say I gained a pound on vacation, right? But I'm losing a pound every week. I'm mm -hmm. now two weeks behind because that week that I would have lost a pound, I gained a pound. And now the next week I lose that pound back. So I just, I've gone two weeks with zero progress, you know? So, um, not to mention too, like the biggest thing that's slowing my my pace here which is i'm okay with it i knew this ahead of time and i'm not going to change this are the saturday cheat meal and then the sunday maintenance calorie day so that's kind of how i do it so saturday i go into a surplus because i need to get whatever pizza whatever i don't care well, so your cheat food. day like let's it's, just... it's not a day it's a, it's like a, so i do the morning through into the evening the same regimen i'd always do and then at nighttime usually on average it consists of there's the pizza fix and there's some cookies behind it you know right which but, no matter what they have was... such they're so high in calories they throw you past where you're supposed to be but like has your has your you know cheat meals not changed throughout your progression like do you do you crave that stuff still as much no absolutely not Absolutely not. I know like, in fact, like this past weekend, I probably could have, I had to tell myself that I wanted to have a cheat meal just because I'm like, <laughs> my, my, my fear with like skipping one is that I'll get halfway during through the week and I'll just be craving it and I'll be going out of my mind. So 
you know, and it doesn't necessarily have to be like a junk meal. It could be going out to eat and having all you can eat sushi or something like that. You know, it doesn't exactly. have to be like in the, when I say pizza, I'm not talking about Domino's. I'm talking about real pizza, you know. <laughs> so um, it's 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 always something like that. But for the most part, uh, I could probably lose another half a pound to a full pound a week if I went seven days with a thousand calorie deficit. But I do five days, thousand calorie deficit. And then my Saturday is probably a surplus. And then my Sunday is a, an even wash of just maintenance. So, yeah. you know, it's really comparable to, you know, the Saturday probably cancels out one of the five days. So it's really four out of the seven days a week that I am truly averaging weight loss. Or and I'm, that's I, it. Yes. Just four well, days. Fi- four fi- days te- out no. of a week. Let me, let me, let me say that differently. It's really five days that I'm, I'm losing the weight, but because I'm gaining the weight, technically, we're talking about such small amounts here, though, that it's right. not like something you see. Um, but the, Hey, ounces equal pounds, right? Yes. So Saturday cancels out Friday, and Sunday cancels out Sunday. So it's really Monday through Thursday I'm just going down, which is that pound to a pound and a half. So if you added those three other days in there every single week, I would be at another half a pound to a pound of, of weight loss every week. But I would be, I don't want to say miserable, but it wouldn't be as easy as it's been. It's been very easy at the rate that I'm doing it, like super easy. I will say it like this. If, if I wouldn't have done the 75 hard thing, like in just where I, I can't fail, I would have, I, I would have done, I would have fucked myself up. Like yeah. haven't let myself get that cheap meal and be like, all right, cool, whatever. I, Cause that's me. Like I cannot give myself an inch because I'm going to take a mile. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's good on you. Cause like when you first told me, you're like, I'm just going to eat rice and chicken. I'm like, eh, fuck that. And now I'm eating eggs and you know, ground beef. Yeah. So, uh, no matter, no matter what happens, you know what I mean? so- <laughs> yeah, you're going to get to a point where guess what? You got to eat the boring shit, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, dude, it's, for, it tastes good to me. So and the like, funny the thing shit- is, 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 is that I actually, so the chicken and rice thing is just the dinner thing but Mm -hmm. that chicken has become like the one thing i struggle to eat but like i can't wait to have my morning yogurt i can't wait to have my egg and rice for lunch before my workout i can't wait to have my protein like these are all things that i'm craving in the moment and it's like except for dinner time the chicken for some reason i don't know why it's overstayed it's welcome so i'm gonna have to switch that up to (laughs) i mean i can't switch it up because it, it has to fill well that's the thing tuna has become a uh right out of the can a so I'll just say real quick, I wake up, uh, the first thing I put in my system is my 80 calorie Greek yogurt. And then, uh, a couple hours later I have my, uh, white rice and my egg. And that is my typical pre-workout carb slash a little bit of protein, a little bit of fat. Um, and then I do my workout and then right after that, I have my protein shake. And then maybe an hour and a half after that, I have my can of tuna. Because I, that's only a recent thing, the can of tuna, because it's like I've, for some reason in the past six months, six months I've been going, it just eluded me how like 110 calories and getting almost 30 grams of protein is so easy to do. And I've just ignored it. Like, yeah. you know, um, but, uh, so that, and then sometime after six o'clock, my, my second to last meal of the day is that chicken and rice or whatever that I'm substituting the chicken. And tonight I had, uh, um, turkey what was it turkey turkey so turkey taco well no because it's i don't know what to call it it's turkey tacos without any of like the the shell basically so i do uh burrito bowl would be the best way to, to say it um but all good so like not high in calories all good stuff all the same nutrients you would normally take in just a different style you know right. um but um and then probably sometime after this podcast i'm gonna have fiber one cereal See, that's something I cannot do. Like I, after I hang up here, like, I can't even think about food. I'm just going to go in, lay down. Cause See, I, I think, um, fuck who said it earlier. I think it was goblin, but I'm not, maybe wrong. The fucking the late night snacks, mm, man. Well, the biggest problem is that your late night snacks are uh, ah. a, a, a box of gummy worms <laughs> and, 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 and all that stuff. <laughs> your late night Dude, snacks turn into a legitimate the- late night snacks. That's the hardest part. It's like, man, my sweet tooth has not left yet. So if anybody listening and cares and has a trick for sweet tooth, please tell me how to fucking get rid of that shit because it's still there. Um, like, I, it is fucking 100% still there. 
I'm, I'm not saying that that is a, a end and all be all to your sweet tooth because I don't have a real sweet tooth, but I can tell you that if I'm getting a sugar craving randomly, Diet Coke. Nice. It's, it's just, it's the same sugar rush sensation in the flavor without any calories. And guess what? You move on and guess and the sugar, the sugar desire is gone. Um, yeah. you know, but, uh, I'll thank Kelly for that one because I, I never really, because I'm an anti-soda person. I don't, I, I, my whole thought process, if you're going to drink regular soda, drink beer, it's better for you. And it did, in my opinion, it tastes better and you get a buzz. Whereas you know, <laughs> diet, diet soda is different diet soda. You're not going to gain any weight from it. So, um, right. but, uh, so that was something that I started having a lot more of was diet Coke. I would have never really had diet Coke prior to my bad habits going Dude, away. I just bought, or I just bought two, two going. liters while I was there. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I'm saying. And they were gone. Yeah. I think, uh, the Sunday night. Oh you know? yeah. Hey, John, um, John asked if you had a location up in, in Rhode Island, but he said, you know, um, Northeast, but I told him that you had moved to NC. So does your Google, uh, count still, does it still link it to Rhode Island or has it been updated? It shouldn't. I've, I've updated just about everything to North Carolina. So okay. I gotcha. I'll have to double check it and make sure. But I'm pretty sure Google still sa- is is uh, not still says, but is in North Carolina now. Okay, all right, John. I don't know what went on there, but <clears throat> he was there. Now he's moved. Yeah. So. Yep. I'm in. I'm um, in NC. Yeah. Finding some good race spots because Charlotte is fucked. So there's um, a. So the funny thing is, is that um, the Sunday when everybody came down here. I had a feeling that was going to kind of happen. I was hoping it wasn't. I was hoping we were just going to get lucky. But so the thing is, the reason why I want everybody here Sunday is because everybody goes to church. Everybody yeah, you're in the, goes to church. You're in the Bible so Belt, you, son. Yeah, you get out early and guess what? There's nobody on the roads, you know? So local highway here um, was like, all right, well, I don't really have a spot yet because we haven't done, the season hasn't gotten here long enough to where I'm just going to go out cruising on my bike or, or Google earth some stuff and figure some stuff out, you know? Or, so it's like, all right, I know this highway location. I've been on it because mo- I have to go that way to get to another city, which has a store that I go to Best Buy. Um, so I have to travel this highway every time. And every time I go there during the week, midday, there's barely anybody on it. And I'm like, you could yeah. do whatever you want. So ironically, um, well, not ironically, but rewinding, everybody got here a little later than probably what I would have wanted. So we were ready kickstands up at like one o'clock and guess mm-hmm. what it, that all those people that were getting out of church or that went to church were getting out of church, doing their, running their errands. It's now a regular Sunday midday. It's busy. Yep. So it kind of made a lot of the Sunday stuff, uh, cluster fucky. But when I, uh, put that video up of me racing that white jixer, we had went out monday at like 6 30 to that highway the red jicks are that went out too they were doing like 15 20 rolls nobody behind them nobody around just <laughs> on them on a main highway nobody oh around God. and that was at 6 30 so i can just tell you this now in two months time that's gonna be a fun evening spot because you can go out there at 7 30 and nobody's gonna be on that road and it's gonna exactly. be plenty of daylight you know downside well, is don't get stuck at nighttime because there are zero lights <laughs> yeah it sucks because like you know everybody went down there sunday unfortunately i wasn't able to stay for the sunday it looks like y'all had a blast and we went or i went down there thinking saturday we could get some riding in try to find some good spots good race spots and it was basically a big old clusterfuck of mm-hmm. wind and construction people and mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. so that was basically a wash except for that we watched a great show and Have you um, watched it all anymore yet or no Dude, no, I, I I still don't have Apple uh, Apple TV, but <clears throat> it's coming once I slow down. He's referring um, to Ted Lasso people. Great show, great fucking show. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, yeah. So like, once it decides, hey, we're gonna be warm for you know two weeks in a row and not ran its ass off, I'm sure we'll come back down there. We'll start trying to find some spots now. If we could find a spot, kind of like you know the one up in Michigan, that would be yeah. wonderful. But yes. Um, you yeah, know, there's a, it, it's definitely me. possible here, but we just, cause like so far haven't seen any, like I, cause I'm used to the North where everybody hates everybody. Um, <laughs> and so when I'm down here and I'm like, you know, there's bikes around a car, the amount of thumbs up we got, um, from like random people rolling by and stuff. And, and it's like, that doesn't happen in the North. They hate you. They want to kill you. 
literally yeah. they want to hit you off the road well, you're the good thing is you came from i mean what's the population there versus what the population that the city that you did live in yeah so the people don't see that stuff like i'm not saying it was very common in rhode island by any means but it, they were kind of like ah fuck it who gives a shit it's another person in my way right yeah. here they're like wait a minute that's a really good looking green bike and oh shit they're flying oh my god they're hauling out like this is cool as shit like yeah, yeah this is so it definitely changes a little bit but so here yeah, you, no, here I... you go warwick rhode island which is the, the town i lived in uh in rhode island now mind you i didn't ever do anything in rhode island or uh, in warwick from like a racing or whatever standpoint but i obviously had to ride there i lived there population yeah. eighty three thousand. pikeville north carolina uh, census as of 2022 population 710 <laughs> oh god now mind you it's a much smaller square mileage uh city than than warwick but the surrounding cities aren't exactly big yeah and, and goldsboro is no, yeah. a solid 15 <clears throat> minutes away and that's that's probably the biggest one let me see what goldsboro is goldsboro, no I, i'm definitely looking forward to uh goldsboro to is 33,000. And Goldsboro is like the closest thing that I have seen to Warwick, Rhode Island. And it's, you know, a, a, almost a third. So. But yeah, no, I, I, I like being in farmland. Um, mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. You can do a lot of things. And I, I, it's weird, too. It's so quiet that I'm like, like, I have a bike I have to tune right now with an SC project exhaust <laughs> on it. And I'm like, everybody in all, all 710 people who live here are going to hear this. <laughs> you know? um because like the thing is the wind that you 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 felt carries sound mm -hmm. like crazy oh yeah you know safest for yeah, the zombie uh, apocalypse yeah there won't be a lot of zombies here right <laughs> yeah no for sure it's uh you know i, I think our plan work sounds pretty good like so i buy the house that's two doors down from you mm -hmm. and then we just force those people to eventually move mm -hmm. and then we'll buy their house burn it down for insurance and then we'll build a shop there mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the ironic part too is that uh you remember seeing all the kids toys out in the yard yeah yeah they're still there they have none, not a single one of them has been picked up yeah yeah oh, that was saturday shit. it's wednesday that's crazy yeah. i haven't seen them they don't come outside and there are m multiple animals multiple kids and the parents that live there i swear man Strange yeah people no that that is that is very I, strange i am but... i am an introvert <laughs> i don't know what the word is for that <laughs> but it ain't it is an introvert yeah because you said you you've you've lived there for how many months now six six or yes. so yeah we just yeah. we just uh passed the six month threshold and y'all seen them what seven times i don't even know i don't know what <laughs> i i truly like if you told me to imagine the person's face i couldn't do it i have no idea like i know what tim looks like and then you know i know i i know what graham looks like the other neighbors. yeah there's a I, Those are great people. I don't know what the one closest to me looks like. Oh, um, that's fucking hilarious. But anyway, back so back to the uh the more main topics, the 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 let's talk race weight stuff. Um so you are down to what's your current weight? 179, roughly? Yeah, probably roughly, yeah. Okay. Um you started at comparatively what you said you don't have an exact when you first started the challenge i don't have an exact and the furthest the closest thing i have on a um a picture of a scale it was um right around the trc event and mm -hmm. i was uh, i think it said like 211 or something like that yeah so i'm i'm just ballparking it on the second because i'll be honest from trc to the first of january i didn't besides going to the gym four days a week like, i really didn't do a whole lot so i would say I, I probably started somewhere around the ballpark at 210 do you have a um like a number that you can say you consistently have been losing weekly because like i know for a fact that like on the what i everything i am doing right now even in six months regardless of body fat regardless of my actual weight this has not changed i am losing one to one and a half pounds every week last week was 1.4 so unfortunately i would say no because i did not scale myself like i purposely just was not paying attention to the scale as much because there were days that i didn't see numbers that i want to see and then they, and then so i just pushed it out to doing it by a week and then eventually it's just like ah if i feel good i'll jump on it mm -hmm. so i didn't really monitor it like as close as you have but i would say the biggest like 
you know, Miami was drastic, right? Like I remember people coming up and saying, holy shit, holy shit. It's like, dude, I'm only down, you know, I don't remember what we, what I got down to there, but I want to say it was 90, 100 into the 190, like low 190s there. And that came off pretty quick. And then the rest has just been, you know, like you said, a, about a, two pounds here. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe get a good week where I got three pounds. But <clears throat> during this process, what I've been trying not to do, because like you said earlier, when you are fasting and, and dieting or whatever, you w- once you're losing weight, you will also lose muscle mass. And, and I don't want to become weaker than I already was. Yeah. So I've tried to continuously push myself. So there for a while I got, I got, had the weight where I was and I was comfortable with it. So I just pushed the reps out like ridiculous. And now that I've, that I've hit my number, I've got to start getting that number back up. Um, mm-hmm. cause I, I don't want to be in the seventies. I really don't. I want to be 180 to 185 at 15%. Yeah. Um, but 15% BMI, not body fat. Yeah. So, so, um, couple things. One, um, you got to kind of figure out too, like, cause I think I saw somewhere, remember too, uh, I think it was Hunter mentioned about how, how tall he was versus his weight and all that. Um, the reality is, is that if you don't look down and see all sorts of muscle fibers throughout your entire body, through your stomach, throughout your chest, throughout your, your obliques, if you don't see muscle, you can physically lose weight and it's not muscle. Um, yeah. now mind you, anything under 10%, my goal is so realistically for me, like I said, I'm roughly 21 and change percent right now. Uh, my ultimate goal is to lose another 10% body fat, which is going to probably change me just as much, if not more than, even though it's going to be less scale weight, it's going to probably change me more physically looking than the previous 10% did. Cause I've probably only lost about 10% body fat so far in that 30 pounds. However, that was a lot more physical size in that 10% than the next 10, because the next 10% is going to be less actual fat. Um, yeah. and, uh, so my, my goal is to not only just get to a certain point, but to stay there. So I want to say my goal is 15% from the, when I say 10 to 15%, I mean my low is 10, my high is 15. So if I see 16, I got to lower that again because I'm letting mm-hmm. myself go, or at least I'm getting to the trend of letting myself go. Um, so, but anything under 10% is considered relatively hard to do in terms of, of, of staying there because yeah. it requires, you know, when you, when you're training, you see these guys training for competitions, um, they're like six, Dude, 7%. I just, I was just listening to another podcast and I had, um, Michael Chandler on it, which is a uh, UFC fighter. He's actually mm-hmm. got yeah. the, he pulled the card for, uh, Conor McGregor Yep. and I was listening to him talk about his, like how he's training and shit. And he's going to be like, it is crazy. He's going to be at 1500 calories a day. Mm-hmm. And, and he's, I think, I think they said the weight they're allowing them to weigh, uh, or, or fight at 175 pounds. Mm-hmm. So, and I think he was like 183, but he was talking about his progression. So he had like, ironically, 75 days from when the, the podcast was recorded till the day of the fight, um, to, to, you know, train and everything. And, uh, 1500 calories and he's doing like two to three workouts a day. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's, holy next, it's, shit. Next, it's next level stuff because you have to like, to get that, that last few percent of body fat out of your system and retain all muscle. It requires beating the shit out of your muscle. So to, to, to stretch the fibers and all that. So it continues to grow because you're having such little calories that again, when you have very little calories, your body naturally wants to take away from whatever the more abundant f- tissue is. So if it's muscle, if you have a lot more muscle than you do fat and you go into a big calorie deficit and you're not doing anything, there's a good chance you're going to burn more muscle than you do fat, which leads to a lot of people familiar with skinny fat. You know, when you're a really big dude with a lot of like body fat, I mean, and you naturally just eat right and go into a calorie deficit and you start, the weight is falling off of you, but you're doing nothing for muscle for the first depending on how much body fat you have for the first good amount of body fat percentage, you're going to burn primarily body fat and a little tiny bit of muscle. But then when you start getting to where those, those tissues are about the same, it's the same thing. 
you're going to pull from both of those. And eventually you're going to get to a point where you got more muscle than body fat. And you're going to like, you're never going to shred. You're never going to get to that point of like, Oh, I can't get the remaining body fat going. Cause you need to essentially beat the shit out of your muscles to make them cause they don't grow, but your goal is to keep them there and just burn the body fat. And that requires two, three workouts a day for that last few body fat percentage. Anyway, I don't ever yeah, want to get I mean, there because are, I have no reason to, there's no point. Exactly. I mean, these are, these are professional athletes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm not, nobody's trying to do that. Well, yes. I'm not saying nobody, but <clears throat> I can confidently say neither one of us are care to get that far. No, like no. I'm not good. I'm not going to get to the point. Like if I'm at the Miami meet or something and everybody's like, Hey, let's go over here to eat. And like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to eat with y'all yeah. unless I'm doing exactly. the challenge and I can't, you know, which did happen. There, like that was kind of the shitty part. Watching, watching all y'all eat in the house at, at past my eight o'clock, and I'm just like, oh, all y'all suck ass. <laughs> 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 but you know, whatever shit yeah. happens. I had a, I had a goal in mind, and, and I hit the goal, and now it's on to the next goal. So, yep. um, to talk, touch a little bit on it, which is crazy because everybody's like, oh, I can't, I can't diet because I, it's too expensive. So it cheap. is sig- it is significantly <laughs> cheaper to eat healthy. It's it's almost embarrassing how much you spend, you know, going to McDonald's and and buying what I don't go to McDonald's, but I'm just saying like whatever you would buy at McDonald's. Like if you were to just turn that into like just going to the grocery store and getting the real food with that, mm-hmm. you know, it it's one cheaper and it's significantly healthier for you. Yeah. So so that's a uh, roughly a 20 pound bag of jasmine rice is around $30, right? And that's what I I pretty much have. So a 20, 20 pound pounds of dry rice. That's not 20 pounds of cooked rice. It get it go it gets a lot heavier and a lot more filled up when it's when it's got water in it. So 20 pounds what what do you think a 20 pound bag lasts? We haven't fully, so I, I want to say we've been here six months. I, it's got to go at least two months. Holy shit. So that's, like, now that's how tw- much does she eat of that? Just curious. About, I mean, I have more, but she has uh, a serving at least once a day for dinner. Right. So, but I'm saying, so if you're feeding one person that you're clear into the two, two month scenario. Yes. Yes. At, at fucking $30 for two months. And that is my primary <laughs> carb, which is my primary yeah. energy is rice. My yogurts, I'd say, are probably the most expensive thing, which I would probably tell people if they're going to, of all the things that I'm having, if you're going to like, from a cost standpoint, cut that out, cut the yogurt out because I like the yogurt because it's just, I, I've always liked yogurt and I like Greek yogurt right. even better, which is ironically better for you. Um, so that's just become like my breakfast because I'm not a big, big breakfast person. I can't wake up and just eat something. So yogurt, 80 calories, not a whole lot of food. It's perfect. It doesn't, mm-hmm. I'm not, I don't have to be like hungry to have it and I don't, you know, it just works out for me. But, um, the rest eggs, those aren't, I mean, you, regardless of how expensive eggs are, they are not expensive by comparison to prepped food, the, even <laughs> fast food, fast foods way is fast food has become very hard to afford. Um, yeah. So eggs, <clears throat> rice, um, and I mean, dude, we get, we get Walmart brand chicken breast and I cut out any of the stuff that's not good and like cooked in an air fryer or a grill, you know, like it's not, it it is so much cheaper than if you, if you had two, just two meals a day, two fast food meals a day, which people just for some reason relate fast food to cheap, two fast food meals a day for seven days a week versus what I eat, what I am eating is I, I, I would have to do the math, but it would probably be, be disgusting for the people that eat fast food to realize how much money they're spending. All right. Yeah. That's, that's the wild thing. It's like, and I still, I still, um, I'm on the go quite a bit. So like I can't meal prep as much as like everybody else, but it's still, there's ways out there to get it done. It's, it's so much worth it. It's, it's, it's insane because like you start um, Jack in a Box brings it up, and he's another good one. He's got a, a plethora of knowledge on this stuff too, but he's he's talked about eating a healthy diet, eating healthier, and you stay full longer. And man, if that isn't the case, like I've ate, you know, over the weekend I had Five Guys, whatever, I, you know. Oof. I haven't had fast yeah. food, and I can't even remember how long. 
Right, but you know, I was kind of like, actually, that's right, a lie. I'm, it was a couple weeks ago I had Bojangles. Yeah, I, I've <laughs> I've got my goal. Like, I'm I'm at the point where it's like, eh, it's not gonna hurt me if I have this, right? Yeah. Um, it's not good food. So, but either way, like, I remember eating it, and then, dude, it was less than like 45 minutes. So I was just like, why the fuck am I hungry again already? When you know, my daily schedule, if I can get the food that I normally do, I'm, I'm like way better off. So yeah. it, it's really not that big of a deal. You know, it, you gotta have, you gotta be dedicated to it, but yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I, so I've been reading some of the comments how they're going and one of them, uh, Jack that I wanted to uh, mention was, cause this is something I could talk about for a while here was that where he says diet drinks, just substitute sugar with another bad substitute for sweetener. Um, which yes. So, but look at it like this. If you were to essentially not have anything in your body or not eat anything or drink anything that's bad, you would almost have nothing. So there's always a bad. And, and as far as like, so specifically the, the most common sweetener uh, is aspartame. Um, and that is the, or the, the most common sugar replacement sweetener is aspartame um, or tain or tame. I can't remember if it's an M or an N. Um, but that being said though, um, the amount of that that you would have to have to lead to potentially something bad is the same kind of scenario where you can talk about how you can drink too much water and have bad effects. Um, so as far as I, I will never agree with um, using artificial, being scared of artificial sweeteners as an excuse to continue to drink regular soda. Now, if you want to have no soda, that's fine. I, I get it. But if you like, if your argument for say, oh, I'm I'm going to continue to drink my Coca Cola because uh, I don't I, aspartame is bad for you, so I'm not going to drink Diet Coke. That's where I would have to be. Sorry, you're you're ill informed of the severities of how bad each thing is for you. Um, I can assure you, 40 grams of sugar and 140 calories for 12 ounces of liquid is horribly bad for you. And if you have three to four sodas a day you've had several meals in sugar and mm -hmm. you know so whereas diet coke yes you could argue water is better duh but at the same time you have consumed zero usable calories so it's really just a fix for a sweet tooth craving you know because if if your options are man i really 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 need to eat that cookie right now and you have a glass of Diet Coke instead, I assure you, a glass of Diet Coke is far better for you than that cookie. Not <laughs> saying the cookie isn't better, cookie is definitely better, but at least in terms of comparing Diet Coke versus regular it's, Coke, it's no contest it, which one's better for you. No contest. It's, yeah, it's just a way to get get a little bit of a fix. You know, uh, I would... I see, what, I see both sides of what you're saying. You know what I mean? Like... But he's got that same mindset of as just don't do it, right? Like you know, he's he have was a strawberry, as well. so it also does the same thing too. Right, that's my other. Right. That's why I have strawberries. They're my they're my sweet tooth replacement. Well, and that's what he brought up. He was telling me, you know, to do uh, do the fresh fruits and stuff. So, Jesus, um, I killed three cans of monster for. Okay, so let me talk about this real quick. So this was wild for me. Um, honestly, I used to drink celsius's and energy drinks and whatever and, and be good uh and they not affect me like hardly nothing since all of this progression if i drink anything um like hardcore cat like energy drink or whatever after like seven o'clock i'm not going to sleep just not fucking happening yeah. it is wild how how much beneficial that that is so so now instead of drinking five celsius i can drink one and be fucking on the moon for fucking hours. Unfortunately mm -hmm. for me, that is not the case. I drink a lot of coffee. Um, and my well, substitute for coffee when I need something that doesn't taste terrible because there's no sugar in it, um, is G fuel, which is 15 calories of artificial sweeteners. Uh, but it's at least better for you than all of the other energy drinks out there. And even honestly, even when I was a fat piece of shit, um, I couldn't drink regular energy drinks. I had to have the low calorie or the low sugar ones because they just tasted better. I don't like the full, hmm. I, something about, you know, an yeah, insane you amount of sugar in a drink. Sweet. Yeah. I, I think it's disgusting. You don't have a bunch it of hardcore terrible. sweet tooth. It's the same way I think like icing on a cake tastes terrible. You get one bite and it's good. The second bite tastes fucking awful. It's so concentrated of sugar. 
that it, it, I, I can't do it. But ice cream cake, yeah. on the other hand, that's a different story. <laughs> oh shit! I just made my. I just. I just. My hand. I just unlocked my fucking camera to follow me. Let me reset. Oh god. Um. Let's see. I take melatonin every night for sleep, but I'm the same way. See. <clears throat> yeah. There's a there's a lot, and it so I think me and Evan are are pretty equally on the thing of like if we find something, we kind of like to hyper focus on it for an extensive amount of time and and learn more about it. It's like to me, it's exciting to learn new yes. shit, right? So that's the one thing that I've I've progressed this whole time is like, oh cool. So now we start learning about foods and diets and weight training, different things. So the um the one thing I didn't bring up was <clears throat> there's a guy I follow or actually I take that back. I don't even think I follow. He just pops up all the, on the feed a lot, but he'll show you like two plates or like a, a McDonald's breakfast, which would be like a McGriddle hash Brown and then a drink, right? Whatever it is, it'd be like 1300 calories. And then the camera will pan over it. He's like, but you, this is actual 1300 calories yeah. of, yeah, of real food. That, yep. And it's just like, you could not eat that for breakfast yeah. and continue out your day because you would be miserably full. Mm -hmm. So once you start reading into like the, you know, that portion of it and then seeing how much they shove in different foods, uh, chemical products, stuff like that, it, it almost scare you, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's that, that, that's the crazy part about it too is like, cause like, all right, I eat chicken. Just, I don't want to say every day, but I'd say probably four out of the seven days a week. I try to anyway. It's, sometimes it's three, um, but for the most part, it's four, for dinner, four days a week. And the same amount of Bojangles chicken, first of all, it's 100 times better taste-wise, but the calories, like you go to, you read the calories, like, and you're like, how does it get that high for almost right. the same amount of chicken, you know? Yeah. Cause like, I think my, I want to say my big dinners are 500 calories, my big ones. And mm -hmm. like on average, it's probably 350, maybe 400, depending on if I go a little harder on the chicken, but like, at least it's, uh, it's chicken calories and it's going, it's protein, you know, um, calories are still calories, but to get the right calories is still better than, you know, if you have to over overeat, I don't want to say it's overeating cause it's not, but if you have to have more calories, at least make it the good stuff, you know? Um, right. <clears throat> but like. I don't know. This I, I just find myself paying attention so much more, and the OCD takes over, which can make the OCD can make kind of a pain in the ass. Because um, like I'm not in a rush at all with the weight. Well, I've been fully content with every week, pound to a pound and a half, and it's going to continue to go that way. But like now that I've lost over thirty, and I look in the mirror, and I can clearly see the difference, and I'm like, God, I'm still nowhere as close to where I want to be. Like how right. much of a piece of shit that I let myself get to that point where, I mean, bottom line is this, uh, my body, I, sh I belong nowhere near 200 pounds, That that's just complete, you know, letting myself go and not caring because like I can, so actually speaking of which I, I pulled this up earlier, so I'm going to say it now before I forget, this was you, um, at battle of the brands. Hold on. I had to, <clears throat> I had to pay attention to it, but um speaking of 30 pounds so i bought a 30 pound weight vest right to to just add to my dumbness but um it is crazy to throw on 30 pounds and walk around and think wow i used to walk around like this on a daily here like uh, when it well when it catches that might have to fast forward it but fast forward to the feed yeah it's oh, it's still not it's, showing up yet. there it is there we go oh shit yeah and Jesus I, and, Christ. And the funny thing was is here is that you're in better shape than you were when you're at Dude. your absolute worst. Oh my I'll have to I'll have to maybe I'll do a comparison there. I'll try to find a picture from when I was like two thirty. You look it more like from a uh a, a where you're thin because like the thing is too is like you can't see how much how different you look in like if you're looking at yourself right now on this live feed, you look like you like substantially smaller in person you don't really see it on like this one angle on a camera but like well that this angle is flattering right <laughs> it's honestly i don't think it is i think it's making you look bigger than you are if i'm being honest with oh, you. oh good that's that, that's that's good that's that's where it needs to be then. yeah so that's I, why that's why it's a shock when it's in person <laughs> yeah you look more like with more muscle more like ricky gatson 
in this picture than you do you <laughs> from a body uh, size wise. You, know, oh, you obviously shit. have more muscle than him in, but like from like your waist is probably the fucking same. Yeah, it's hard to say, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, let me, well, first of all, that is, to, that uh, is the shitty part about losing all the weight and having to buy new clothes, mm -hmm. but I'll take it. It's fine. Um, find... for sure. Fuck you. Right, so... And when you're about to eat something. So, okay, I have some pictures of myself in my youth, and if I told you my weight versus <laughs> the way I look, people would understand more about how, like I say, I belong nowhere near 200 pounds. So, I don't know, are, 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 do we have people that are, men that are, are, that if they saw someone in a singlet, they'd be like, ew, I don't know. Probably. <clears throat> Whatever, I don't care. Okay, so here is a picture of me at 17. And Jesus. I, I am wrestling 119 pounds <laughs> and I am five, five, the same height that I am right now. Mind you, the same height. Here's one picture. Don't ask, by the way, I, I didn't actually know the camera was there. You'll see in a second. Um, I just, yeah, when this picture it. was taken, I happened to be staring directly into the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so you're giving it that, that like, I'm going to rip somebody's head off. Look. I'm, I'm still waiting kind for the of picture, ripping. Well, way. I mean, I'm ripping someone's arms off, but yes, it's. Oh, nice. You'll see. You'll see. Oh, Cross says hello. How about Jesus? That's you. That's me at 109. It's called 120 pounds, but I'm wrestling 119 pound weight class. <laughs> and Jesus I had a lot Christ. of hair because I never cut it. When I was young, I never cut my hair. Holy fuck! Here is right. me at 125 <laughs> pounds. <laughs> holy shit yeah that's uh that's i can i can see i can see what you mean now so when you know i talk about getting to 150 pounds and be like oh my god you want to be that small i'm like bro that's me at 120 like you can if you have body fat you can lose weight and still look athletic you know People just Jesus. like, look, like, look at everybody in the UFC, for example, and look at the <laughs> weight classes that they fight at. They're all six inches taller than me. They're all like twice as wide as me and they're shredded and yet they're lighter than me. Well, that's kind of why like the, the normal for today's society is like, wait a minute, we're significantly bigger than the Americans are significantly bigger than where, where we even should. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, dude, that's crazy. Like if you. I, I would not believe that was you. Yeah. And the, and the like thing just is, straight, straight up. And my diet then consisted of cookies. <laughs> that's the funny part. Fun. <laughs> oh, uh, shit, dude. That's crazy. But that's what that's the advantage of youth, though, is that you can have no diet, eat like an asshole, and look like that just with athleticism. Um, right. Now that's where the age comes in. Now you have to kind of hyper focus on how and when you eat and all that stuff. But still, technically, I have an advantage by knowing that even though I'm older, it's harder to do from a recovery standpoint, but there's no reason I can't look like that. If not better at my age, that was literally right. half my life ago. Look at it like that. And you were, and you were eating cookies and I was eating cookies and I looked better. So, all right, we've, we've kind of, let's see, we're 98 minutes in. We kind of missed the point of this whole weight loss thing. Um, how significantly faster the fucking bikes have gotten. <laughs> yeah. Like, I yeah. mean, I still, I still think the white bike's pretty slow. Uh, it just kind of is what it is. And I haven't got to, and we talked about this over the weekend, like the turbo bike's just not going to give a fuck. Like, it, it doesn't care how much weight you got on it. Clearly it does to an extent, but, um, Your I'm BMW excited. is the perfect candidate. I'm telling you. I'm, you're right, but I'll be honest, it's not because la it's been so long since I've tried to do anything with that bike that the reference point's going to be like, eh. So uh, the the white bike, I I'll notice, I'll know notice on the white bike uh, eventually once I start because I'm just doing solo stuff right mm -hmm. now. Like I, I came down to, to to test with you, and then we had wind. So yeah. like it, it's just fucking crazy, man. Like. Um, so that, and that's cheap and that's, that's, I'm not gonna say free, free weight by any means, but like it, you have to pay for food, but you're paying for food regardless. I mean, you're, uh, you're paying, you're technically saving money there too. You're, where you're really paying is the effort. Um, and it's a, so little effort. 
Yeah. Like on no offense, but on like your end, you've got a very nice regiment where your efforts are minimal mm-hmm. and you're still seeing great results. Mm-hmm. Mine are a little bit more extreme, but you know, it's just different progressions on, on how you want to be and what you can continue, continue with and stay consistent through a long, long, long period of time. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, like I said, that's why my goal is to, to get down. I think when I, for me now, don't get me wrong. I'm, I, I've put on, I mean, naturally, as you get older, you do get a little bit heavier. Um, even with the same, you know, tissue, I don't know what you would call it, quantity, whatever, um, fi- you know, muscle versus fat, you are a little heavier. So I'll never obviously get down to 125 pounds again. I'd have to burn muscle to get there too. Um, but there's no reason why I couldn't get to 145 pounds, provided I don't start throwing on muscle, um, which I yeah. don't have any intention of just throwing them. Whatever develops through my process of lifting five times a week in my calorie deficit, which is not going to be a whole lot because I'm in a deficit, um, is what I, I get. You know, maybe I'll grow a little more um, once I, I I bump up those calories once I get down to where I want to be body fat wise. But like I said, my goal is to get another 10 percent out right now and then maintain 10 to 15 anywhere in that range. I'll be content with in terms of just living my life. You know, 10 will yeah. obviously be on the lighter side. 15 will be on the heavier side. But that's probably eight to 10 pounds of body fat that that 5 percent right there. Um, whereas I'll probably lose another 15 pounds of body fat will get me probably that 15% point. Um, and then, you know, cause right now I was 172 last week, this week I should be 171. Um, Math. so yes, I, it's crazy, right? <laughs> It's been wildly consistent. It's almost like scary how well it, it, it is consistent. Um, but so another 15 pounds out of me. Okay, I'll be 157 and then 10 pounds under that high 140s, you know, and that'll get me to where I, I think I can be from a really, really athletic standpoint. But mm-hmm. as long as I don't stop and by don't stop, I mean, because one thing I've, I've, I've said to you that I've never done, that's kind of like a little personal goal of mine is my entire life has been a whole lot of on and off between working out, not working out for a long period of time, trying to get in shape, letting myself go, being in great shape, being in terrible shape, a massive roller coaster of what I've done with my body. Um, one thing I have never done that's kind of a personal goal is to stick to a routine of working out and eating clean for one full year with no change. No negative change, I should say. Um, right. I've never done that in my entire life. I've never made it a full year working out every week with the exception of a rest week here and there because you need those every once in a while. Uh, I feel like I'm approaching a rest week soon because my body's just, it, it's it, its getting pretty regularly sore muscle-wise. So mm-hmm. I just need a little more recovery time. But anyway, that's the one week stuff like that is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like completely falling off the wagon. And then like, I haven't worked out in a couple months, something like that. And then I get back to it. I want to go a full year cause I've never done it before. Um, but my ultimate goal is to, is lifestyle is to get to a certain point where I am. Okay. This is where I want to be. This is where I am comfortable, where I'm happy at and live the life that of a little bit of up and down body weight. Cause that's, that fluctuation is, is guaranteed if you want to live a life. Um, right. And, but as long as that my my maximum isn't out of that happy place, you know, <laughs> go to your ha- go to your go happy, to your happy place. place. I heard they were making a sequel to that. I don't know how true that just, is. I almost hope just not. tap just tap it in. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, if it's a if it's a Happy Madison production, it should still retain everything and mm-hmm. be good. But. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like Adam Sandler needs to, at this point in his career, kind of tackle the serious roles because he has been doing a lot of that lately. And it's been, he's the far more talented than what I've ever given him credit for. Like case in point is uncut gems, movies like that. Like he's just, he's a very talented actor that has been sort of, he, he does it to himself, I guess, but he just typecasts himself because he makes all of his own movies. He doesn't rely on anybody else. Um, right. <laughs> but he's this goofy idiot. You know, he's another Jim Carrey type character where he is always him. But anyway, yeah. besides the point. Um, okay, so 
talked about my goals, your goals. Do you have a, an official ish goal? I mean, I don't guess I don't have one of those either, but. Uh, I mean, no, not really. Like I, like I said, I just want to be at 15% uh, BMI. Mm-hmm. I want to, I want to see if I can get to that. I mean, um, for the most people or for the people I've talked to, that seems like a very achievable goal at where I'm, you know, kind of how I'm on track with things. Um, actually, no bullshit. June, June tenth. If I work out at least, I think three or four times a week and maintain under twenty three hundred calories, I'm projected to be at that goal on mm. in June. Um, my goal is to get there before the tenth, but. Let's face it, once things start warming up and I'm out on the bikes a lot more or I'm, I'm traveling or racing, things are gonna things are gonna change. So yeah. I'm trying to get a head start on it now and just keep fucking digging where I'm in. So when it comes to like the the Michigan meet, like uh the superbike meet, I can I can enjoy myself and not yeah. have to worry too much about it. Yeah. Well, that's kind of like, I, I plan on that. So I, I meant to ask you too, um, do you have, I know it's early, but do you have any idea time frame wise, how long you're going to be there? Cause obviously we usually stay there for longer than just yeah. the length of the meet. Yeah. I mean, realistically, it's going to be always, I'm going to be limited and and probably about the, um, you know, the Wednesday to that Sunday, Monday morning, mm-hmm. um, kind of time frame. We got to say, there's a lot of, um, variables going into this meet that will potentially change everything, um, that are, we normally do. So, it's kind of hard to plan things, but yeah, for the most part, like I'd go for, you know, five, four or five days, okay. something like that. Probably, probably four days. Cause I'm just so. basically got a plan. So I'm trying to like, right, get everything in for my entire summer, uh, on a schedule so that I can believe it or not plan my workouts. So like, for example, like it's really, really hard for me to want to work out on a vacation. Cause like mm-hmm. I, to this day, I do not like working out. I like the results after working out. I like where working out gets you in life. I still don't like putting my body in physical pain. Like anybody who says they truly like working out, it's like you like punching yourself in the face too. It's the same sensation. It's pain. Do you like pain? But um, that being said, what if I'm on vacation, I'm having a good time. I don't want to stop whatever I'm doing of having a good time to go put my body in physical pain. So I try and schedule it so that that's the, that's my rest week. That's my week where I am just going to relax. You know, yeah. So, well, I'm sure. I'm sure you'll be. You know, if trends per, you know, go into this year, you go up there for you know about a week and do a bunch of work prior to the event or after the event. So, um, well, that's why I was wondering when you're going because I would, you know, it make more sense for us to go together. But obviously, you can only stay for so long. Um, yeah, honestly, the best bet if you're not planning on taking both bikes would be trailer one of your bikes here and drop course, your trailer off sure. here. Well, I'm just saying, drop your drop your uh, trailer here, and then throw your you know I keep the bike in the trailer until I you know load everything up. Yep. And then um then I can just bring everything with me. Yeah. Um and then you could just drive your car. You'll get great gas mileage. You don't have to pull a trailer, and you can still get shit done. Mm-hmm. Um, it does kind of suck because I that's a twelve hour drive, but I won't. I I feel like we'll have um. Because if I'm taking, like, if I have to pick and take one, like, one bike only and put things on the open trailer, which I know you're not going to be a fan of, so I, that means I'm taking my big enclosed trailer. So if I'm taking my big enclosed trailer, I've got to at least fill that thing up, you know, mm-hmm. four, four to six bikes yeah. um, to make it, to make it make sense, right? Yeah, I agree. And I can so, tell you, I'm probably only going to take one bike because... The reality of taking multiple bikes for me to a meet, it just means someone else has to ride one of my bikes for it to make any kind of sense. Um, Mm -hmm. So realistically, I just have to pick and choose what bike I bring to what event that makes the most sense for the event. And like the Michigan meet, realistically, ZX-10 makes far more sense for that meet than the Busa. As much as I would love to bring the Busa because it's my faster of my two bikes, I mean, shit, the 10 is still, especially with me losing weight, you know, is, is, is probably the more fun bike to bring out places. And it's also the better street bike at the moment. Um, yeah, it's still, still extremely competitive. Yeah. Um, you know, 
with your with your newfound loss of weight, so to speak. Um, yeah. You know, once you change, find your settings where you need it to be. Um. Yeah, it's gonna be fucking. Yeah. It's gonna be badass. Yeah. Like it, that, you're no longer gonna have to put a jockey on your bike to see what it does. You're just mm-hmm. gonna be the jockey. Exactly. <laughs> and that's what people don't realize is that like I'm I'm. You know, I'm going to, my goal is to get to a weight where like currently anyway, like the mojos, the certs, they're heavier than me. That's my goal. That That's not my goal. That's a, like, kind of like a side quest in the main <laughs> mission here, <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh shit. You hey, know, hey. like on my path, I veer off. I'm going to get lighter than him, you know? You're right. But like, right. don't get me wrong. Both those guys are, are smaller than me. So they could get lighter than me. Um, like, I think Mojo could probably pretty easily get into the 130s if he, you know, wasn't drinking every weekend. But that's, a, that's Dude, I don't know. I don't know his lifestyle. I'm, I shouldn't say I, that. <laughs> but I know no, he could I be was, lighter if he wanted to be. Um, I was just talking to him the other day. I, I could easily see him. I know at one point, you know, um, I think he was like race weight at like 140 something. And he was like in, you know, good shape, like good tone and everything like that. So... I don't see why I couldn't, but, um, who knows, you know, I don't know what their goals are, what their plans are, but it's going to be cool in my opinion to see you go out there instead of having to, you know, for instances, when you have certain, you know, quote unquote grudge races with people, instead of having to put somebody on the bike and rely on their input to tell you what you need to do to make the bike go faster or, or do whatever, do you can just do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the best part is you will always make it where you don't have to ride the bike. Yes. Like you all, all you have to do is go. Yes. And, and, and it's over. I try and tell people that all the time too. And cause like when I get accused of random shit, uh, like I have, I'm lying about what's done. It's like, I don't think people realize the massive advantage. And this isn't just a me thing. This isn't anybody in this particular scenario, but someone who builds the bike, tunes the bike, and rides the bike, it's all the same person, so they have 100% full control over their scenario, they have such a bigger advantage over someone that relies on other people for other parts of the process. So, like, if I it's my bike and I just ride it, and Joe Blow tunes it, and, and you know, Joe Blow squared, whatever, he, <laughs> he builds it, and they have to talk to each other for one needs a suspension setting, the other one needs a throttle setting, and then this guy needs to ride it, whereas I am all three of those guys, so there's no communication problem. There's just a, yeah. this is what it's doing, this is what I have to do, I have to make the decision, do I want to try and do it with my throttle hand, which I never do, um, but I, yeah, that, that is an advantage, and anybody who does do something like that has an advantage, um, but anyway, that I do look forward to being more competitive size wise because I oh, feel yeah. like in the, the latter half of my racing career, I am racing lighter people all the time. And it's not necessarily like, cause I'm racing super small people. I'm just, you know, overweight. <laughs> yeah. Now, now that I think about it, you said something about the BMW. Um, I'll have to look back, but when I raced Artie on my BMW was probably the last time I raced that bike. And I want to say I had to have been almost 220 then. Yeah. And the, so, fu- the funny thing is, is that the last time I weighed Artie, Artie was 168 pounds. I got three weeks before I'm Artie weight, according to my <laughs> math. Maybe not even, maybe two if I really hustle, but I'm going to call it a nice round three, you know? Right. And then I plan on keeping going. So now I'm past well, him. That- Mind you, he's not the lightest guy, but he's still a, a, a relatively light guy in the racing scene comparatively. Oh, no. Sorry, Artie, you got comfortable. You you thickened up some. Just <laughs> happens. Yeah, like it happened to me. It fucking straight up. Mm. So that's that's one thing that that I've noticed. Um, Evan, you just don't get out. Like you stay in your little castle, <clears throat> and I kind of don't blame you. But with me, you know, having to work, you know, having to go to work and actually talk to people, like I see my coworkers, like they'll go to buy something out of store and they'll be like, uh, no, I'm not gonna put that up. So like just being trying to better yourself just a little bit is making yeah. other people around you have to keep up. So now look at, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be somebody to beat. You you've always, for some reason had a, a target on your head, but now you had a target on your head when you were at 200. Well, now you're going to be a target on your head at 150, and it's going to be significantly yes. fucking. Yes. So, like, and like, it's almost like when it comes to the, the body weight or the, the body 
yeah, the body weight, um, and the racing side of things, it's almost like kind of personal now. And even though like there's so m- there's so many different small reasons of why I'm trying to ultimately the biggest reason is, you know, I, I want to be comfortable in my own fucking skin, but the, all like the racing side quest stuff is like, it's kind of personal. I want to show everybody what I've been bitching about for years, you know, like uh. one more time I get to say, I told you so that's my goal here with that is, Hey, look, I've lost 50 pounds. All of a sudden this regular bike is that much harder to beat now. And no, I haven't put a motor in it. Cause like I just, <laughs> so I was just telling you, I rode the, uh, the Busa, you know, after I put the, the, the arm ba- or the new arm on it. And, uh, I did a couple one, two threes to stretch the new chain out. And I was like, holy shit. The last time I rode that bike there, it was 50 pounds heavier in, with both me and the weight of the bike. Cause the bike's down about 20 something pounds, not a whole lot, like 20, 21 or something. And I'm mm-hmm. a little over 30. So it's like, that's a little over 50 pounds since I last rode that bike. And I got on it and I'm like, this is stupid. It's like, <laughs> I've always tried to say like, for example, jockey Mike, who's, I won't say his weight, but he's lighter than I'll ever be period. Um, he has a different perspective of what something is, no matter what bike he gets on. You can get on right. your BMW, my ZX10, my Busa, your Busa, it doesn't matter. Whatever bike you ride. He yes. can get on a Grom yes. and be fast. <laughs> Whatever bike he gets on that you get on, you too will have entirely different perceptions of how fast that thing is because of that yeah. body weight difference. You know, um, So you're saying something is slow, and he'll get on it and be like, yeah, that's slow. But the reality is, is that what he's feeling and agreeing is slow. If you could feel that, you'd probably say it's fast. But you can't because you can never be that small. Yeah. But. Yeah, no, it's it's crazy. And, uh, like, I'm not even... I'm not even trying to go as far as the weight process. I just, um, it, it's really nice just being able to look good naked. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, yes. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm still not to that point. You've, you, you, like I said, you had a solid leg up cause you, I would say comparatively speaking before you started your, uh, the 75 challenge, the way you looked then, like how you had been like slowly changed. You didn't look like anything like you did when you had that Ricky Gadsden picture. Like you had slowly started losing fat, putting on muscle. You weighed about the same, right? But you had been transforming yourself. Well, where right. you were at there is kind of where I'm at now. Mind you, I have lost weight because I had so much body fat. Um, but so you pre 75 challenge is where I'm at kind of now. And my goal is to get sort of where you are, but for my body Tight. height or body, body height. height yeah. Height. So for me, that's probably another 25 pounds. Um, but God, if you, it like, if you just think about it, 25 pounds, like that's disgusting, right? C- can knowing that how far you've came, which mm-hmm. you've came a long way, and to know that you still got, you know, 20 pounds you want to take off mm-hmm. of you, it's like, that's going to take forever. Mm-hmm. I go so, pick up a 20 pound weight. I'm like, God damn, this still has to come off. <laughs> it's crazy. See, I, I actually do not know what a reasonable weight because like the whole reason I wanted to get to 179 was because that was my Marine Corps weight, like what that was the standard for my height and my age at the time. Now, clearly I'm significantly older, but that's not the point. Um, but I got there and I'm like, okay, cool. But I don't know at six foot what I could actually, you know, maintain at and not look sick or whatever. You know I mean? Like I'm trying to keep a good balance of everything. So it's pretty much, this is, this is again, why I don't like BMI. It really just, it doesn't go into too much detail in terms of the, the, the body tissues. So, um, 10 to 12% body fat is considered the male relatively maintainable body fat percentage that is considered to be like that. I am, I have a defined stomach beach body type thing. Whereas mm-hmm. anything less than that, you will see the difference, but that's when you start to see fiber, like strands of muscle, right? Which you start when you, you know, when you get to that, like six, 7%, you start to see like the bodybuilder stuff, which is not maintainable. You have a single meal and that go, and that starts to go away. 
um, 10 to 12% should be like your, we kind of have realistically, you and I have the same goals, regardless of how we get there. The end result, I think we're envisioning the same thing. So that 10 to 12% body fat percentage is where you want to be, regardless of how much muscle you have. The, what determines how much muscle you have is determined what you want to look like. Do you want to yeah. be, have a more, I don't want to say jacked, but jacked look. Do you, or do you well, want, that, do you want to be skinny? <clears throat> like, for example, okay. Do you want to be Jason Statham or do you want to be the rock? Cause I guarantee uh, you Jason Statham and the rock uh, have about uh, the same body fat percentage. <laughs> ignoring their height, obviously, but just going off <laughs> no, of their, no. their muscle content. One yeah. has far more, like for example, their BMIs, I guarantee you, I guarantee you the rock is obese. According to BMI scale, look at the rock oh, and tell yeah. me that man is obese. You would never associate that word with him, but on BMI, he is, whereas Jason Statham is probably average on BMI, which is ridiculous because it does, again, he has low body fat percentage, high muscle content. But the point right. is, is that they probably have, I'll say at times, the same body fat percentage, yet you put a, you know, a long sleeve shirt on both of those guys that isn't like clinging to their body. You can clearly see the rock is like twice the size of Jason Statham. You Jason Statham, you wouldn't really be able to tell that he looks like he does with a regular shirt on, you know, yeah. but he is in pretty solid shape. You know, that's, that's what you got to figure out. My goal, if I have a shirt on, I don't want you to, I want it to be a complete mystery as to how much muscle <laughs> I have. However, you can't do that when you get to like the rock. He's just too big for any clothing to hide muscle. Right. Yeah. Yeah. When you have to like turn sideways to get through a door, I'm not, yeah, I'm not doing all that exactly. Shit. So no. you got to figure out kind of what that is. And for me, like I think, and it's going to sound weird, but I think the ideal for me body look would be something along the lines of say a Jason Statham where mm -hmm. he's extremely fit, low body fat. He does have muscle, but you put on regular clothes. He looks like everybody else. That to me is right. like the ideal physical body. But obviously, you know, that, that is, that entirely varies person to person. Some guys want to be monstrously swole and huge. <laughs> I just don't see a yeah. function to it. That's my whole thing. Well, I mean, like now we'll say, you know, you see the, the bigger guys and they're like, oh, your just assumption is like, oh, they're slow or they're whatever. And it's, it's crazy. I was, uh, I ran across somebody's video and he's like, as flexible as a gymnast and he's fucking huge. Yeah. And it's like, wow, that's, that is impressive. Like that right there, way to go. Cause that's, you know, keeping you keeping movable and keeping an athletic look and not a bodybuilder look is, is probably where like, yeah. I, I want to keep the athletic look. Agreed. Agreed. Um, so I, yeah, like I said, we probably have the same, end result goals and whatever we weigh is what we weigh you know but yeah, yeah. throttle up's probably pretty accurate on that <laughs> yeah, that's what i was laughing i was like oh uh, yeah yeah that's probably I mean, right here's the thing though right anybody can say whatever they want about how much i did it again i activated he, my he's candy. over he's over 50 right yeah yeah um fuck it at that point but it, here's the thing here's the thing have you ever read <laughs> His routine, his daily routine. I'm sorry, nobody in chat could ever do you know, at any age what he does on a daily basis yeah. with or without hormones. You cannot, the man is a machine and that strict, strictly comes from him, not any kind of hormone. Yes, at his age, he almost needs that stuff to just maintain. But the point is, is that well, I've always, that's one thing I've always hated about a lot of steroid use or even just the basic stuff is how discredited people get for using it. Like, oh, it's cheating. Yes. In sports, it is a hundred percent cheating. However, you still have to put in the work to get there. You don't just take steroids and blow up. Yeah. And yeah, you can't just oh. be like, mm, hold on. All the steroid you does I mean? is heavily, heavily increase recovery time or decrease, sorry, recovery time. Yeah. Decrease. And I took a, I took a very small, I think it was like can't remember what it was i want to say it was like 250 milligrams of testosterone at one point a couple uh probably five years ago when i started working out at one point just to try and see it was very very uh light usage and in that amount of time i could see it's it was actually radical how i was quickly able to put on each workout 
a substantial amount more weight from like rapid recovery. It's wild. Oh, and that was just regular old testosterone, just a higher amount than you would probably get from a doctor, you know, and, a, right. and a low amount for someone who's actually trying to juice. I, 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 I did like what you would call like the, the, the dipping your toe into the, the cold water type, <laughs> you know, and I just tried it to uh, see. And what I saw in that amount of time, mind you, I didn't take it seriously. I lasted, I think two months and then I stopped mm-hmm. working out and stopped taking it and just went right back to being a piece of shit. But in that time frame, I know my, that wasn't my body naturally recovering to put on that kind of weight or put, damn. put on lift the kind of weight. I, I couldn't imagine. Like I, I really like, Cause you have to inject that shit, right? Like yeah. you can't. Yeah. Ah, well, see, it, there's, there, there's a oral stuff, but oral is, is considered to be less, uh, well, in layman's terms, less bad, but, uh, yeah, the needles are, are pretty much the, the, uh, the main, the way only, of doing it. uh, needles terrify me. Really? It's mad at, yeah, I mean, I, I, I no one likes needles, but being <clears throat> terrified is, is strange. Well, but, I mean like, okay, one, I've not terrified of much. So, like I'm not gonna cry and ball up in a tear. Just like I just don't like it. I don't like the thought of sticking something in my arm. Like even I've had a, just a crazy amount of blood work over the years. Um, whatever reason, right? And like the nurse is like, "Oh, I'm not gonna watch." And she's like, "Really?" And I was like, "Yeah, just go ahead, do it, do it quick, do it." <laughs> I just don't like it. I don't know what it is about yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> And like, like Hunter said, that that's, like I said, it, it's, um, I was taking a slightly more than what would be prescribed by a doctor amount of dosage, uh, test <laughs> is just testosterone. Um, and that was only, I did, did it one time just because I was, I don't want to say I was, uh, uh, peer pressured into it, but it was one of those when in Rome, I'm working out with well, someone who's your, on it, like religiously, he was like, yeah, fuck it. I'll give it peers, a shot. Right? Yeah. You know? But realistically, like that's, it's just for me, someone who doesn't care about being at some point, I'll need it just to, to because of age. But, uh, someone like me, it's just, I'm too lazy to do that shit once a week. I know it might've been even twice a week. I don't remember. It's, it was a while ago. It was like five years ago. Um, right. But, uh, overall yeah. though, not necessary. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, like, who cares? At that point, you know, we were watching that one guy's uh, show or YouTube channel while we was at, while I was at your house, and it's like, yeah, like even if he is on it, fuck it, who gives a shit? Mm-hmm. He's look at how much effort he is putting in. Oh yeah, to to get there. Like you can't just you know either movies or or whatever mm-hmm. reasons. Like I know we talked about um uh Alan uh, Richardson, right? Like mm-hmm. in in Reacher, where he got so much bigger the second season. Yeah. Well, you you can't just do that. You can't snap your fingers and be like, you know, big. Yeah. Or if you do, it's gonna be like, you know, some kind of prosthetics, which is not gonna look good mm-hmm. in in action. So yeah, it's there are. I'm not gonna say there are times to do it, not to do it. I just just like Hunter said, it's just on how you use it. Moderate, like everything in in moderation is okay. But once you start really fucking you know, going crazy. Yeah. That's when everything's bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, slightly want to change a little bit cause we're at the two hour mark and, okay. and dur- during the week, I just, I have to keep them pretty, pretty slim to about the two hour, two and a half hour, whatever. Okay. Um, but question for the ones that are in chat and I'll try to clip this a little bit later. How many people enjoyed, actually enjoyed us talking, not necessarily about bikes all that much. I mean, this is something me and Evan's kind of been chatting privately about and just curious like we all love bikes i mean um i would say i'm an enthusiast because i don't give a shit if it's got a carburetor on it i like motorcycles each motorcycle has its own um thrills for it uh like i'm riding a harley right now like that's a lot of fucking fun so it's just do do is there any interest in the um, bringing in other topics, you know, and trying to get a little bit more, in my opinion, a little bit more personal with uh, some of our audience, you know, so getting ways to, for y'all to relate to us and vice versa. Um, we try to, I try to watch the chat and I know Evan does as well. Unfortunately, when we have guests on here, it's really hard to watch the chat and interact mm-hmm. with the guest as well. And, and fortunately, sometimes, you know, we, we get guests and, you know, they're either, 
like captivating when we have Mike on there. I don't even think we pay attention to what the chat says because yeah. when Mike's when Mike's talking, you listen, right? So um going into the future, I think both of us want to see this channel grow a, lo- a lot more. Um, me personally, I want to see it grow a lot more. Evan, I understand this is, it's very taxing for you and maybe we can figure out something to improve that on both, the, both of our ends. Um, but just, just kind of curious, any, any feedback for the mm-hmm. people that are watching still, if there are any still. So I was actually thinking about potentially the guy with the white jigsaw that I just recently like met and raised and stuff like that. He, uh, when he was at, before he left, he brought out one of his drones. He has the goggles and not like, I mean, he's serious. He said, he, he said, but prior, he says he flies drones. Um, and I don't really know how to take that when someone says <laughs> I fly drones. I'm like, okay, do you, right. you do it for the military? Do you do it for fun? What? But he like, threw this drone in the air and took and was just like flying around like he had like he flies fucking drones like yeah i i, I don't know how long it would take me to do just the maneuver he did leaving my driveway you know um no so, i, I he will said ask, he likes making was, videos so was it a first person was yeah. it like a, a fpv drone like did he had to wear goggles or was he just yes. watching a screen no you have to oh he, he had the goggles yes yeah the, uh, he Dude. first he had me put the goggles on and he w- looked at the drone fly away and i was looking at the goggles and he was flying it I'm like, the fact oh, that you shit. can see that. He's like, yeah, eventually you'll lose it, though, because he, he got so far away. But it's fast. It's yeah. way faster than my Mini 4 Pro. Um, so he said he likes making videos. So I have a, I'm have going to see about potentially if he would be interested in, in collabing something there with collecting footage, making videos, something. Um, but I don't know, because I, I want to do a lot of stuff on here. Especially now that I'm getting in better shape, I'm I'm less likely to not want to be in front of a camera. I don't like being right. fat in front of a camera. Who does? Um, but I would like to. I don't know. I want to start talking about different things, like because bikes. Like I said to you prior to this, you can only talk about bikes so much. There's just well, only so many subjects you can cover. I could talk about this new friggin' webcam that I think is far cooler than my ZX10, and it was two hundred and fifty fucking dollars. We didn't even get into the real topics. Like, I really wanted to bring up the X4 and some stuff like yeah. that, but I don't know enough about it. And honestly, I would kind of like to get somebody that knows Insta and partners with Insta really good to, to maybe have them on next week about it. Yeah. But I, I think the, the all, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think we could potentially start slowly, not just jump ship to other subjects, but slowly start, like, for example, bring in, like you said, someone who might know Insta that's like got works for them or whatever. That yeah. brings someone like the video that's been circulating that you sent me about the guy hating on titanium, getting someone in here who knows metallurgy better than your average Joe. You know, it's not about bikes, but it, it still can be applied to bikes. You know, I want the podcast to be a little more generic, is not the word, but general is what I'm going with. It covers a bit more broader topics than just so and so because like i mean no offense to bike people but bike people follow trends they don't uh, research nine out of every 10 are the exact same person on here and the reality is is the best guests we've ever had come out of nowhere like it's the convert who they are as a person tends to shine through what they're doing with a bike more so than right because it's their personality some people are stage fright they get they clam up they're like uh, my name is, uh, Bob from, from, from Idaho. I, uh, right. I bought a 750 when I was 19 years old and, um, now I, I just set a world record for going fastest on two wheels. Right. Can you tell us about that, Bob? Well, uh, like that's like that, like that, that happens all the time. And these will be people that you think are going to be great. And they're, it's boring and dry. Then you'll have someone with zero recognition of any kind who's achieved almost nothing in the bikes and get on here and just like go toe to toe with you from a conversation point. And it's a good conversation. And cause podcasts are all about conversation regardless of what mm-hmm. you're talking about. Yeah. So that just, you know, I, we, the few people that have interacted with the chat have it, it seemed to take it well. So maybe we can start doing that and rolling that in and, and um, maybe change a few more things. I'm, I'm open to working with any, any videographer or anything like that to, to create some, some just better quality shit. And, and I like to actually get to know people. So, um, you know, 
kind of get to that, we can be more relatable and, and our guests can be more relatable and mm -hmm. chat and everything. So it just kind of all plays on each other. Just kind of want to get an idea. And chat is saying actually Dumongus wouldn't be, uh, would be good for the, um, uh, Insta uh, stuff. Yeah, I can see that because so, he's recently, I don't know if he's got sponsors or, or what with it, but well, he's been promoting Insta a lot lately. It's a it would be a it would be actually very beneficial if we have Dumongus on and let me see, what's the so next week maybe? Because he has a dino day coming up on the fourth, mm -hmm. which would be Perfect. Perfect. So, yeah, so we could either do the 21st or the 1st, probably the 21st. Actually, next week would be the best. So he can talk about the Insta, and we can kind of bump his, uh, uh, promote his Dino Day a little bit more and, yep. and just have a good good conversation. So um, either you or me can reach out to him, whichever one. But, <clears throat> yeah. And like like always, um, if any ideas, anybody y'all want to see on here, by all means, we're not... We're not opposed to having people on here, but I I personally don't want to have anybody on here that's going to fucking start a bunch of unnecessary drama. Like mm -hmm. I want to have a have a genuine conversation with somebody and get to get to know them and like them. I don't mind pushing the pushing the envelope just a little bit and getting some spicy spice in there, but no, I don't I don't care to have a bunch of yelling matches and shit like that. It's just not going to get that's not what I'm going to put my effort in. I'll set that way. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, I definitely agree. I would like to, you know, it doesn't, there's, and not to mention too, I don't think there's any good conversation in arguing. It just, like no. it's the second, because what happens is, is debate is one thing, but, you know, debates usually involve, uh, the motions start to heat up and the more emotions come in, the more it goes to, uh, to complete dog shit. And it's like, I don't care about that stuff, you know? Yeah. So, <clears throat> Mungus sounds like a possible good scenario for next week. So, I'll hit him up tomorrow and see where he's at and if he wants to get on here. Cause then we can, you know, uh, we can talk about my awesome webcam here, which you need to honestly, do you have $250 that you can throw out right now on something technology that's it's really pointless? But, dude, it's so cool. So, I'll say it like this Do I? Yes. I am cheap as fuck, though. <laughs> so, like, not knowing what my bill is going to be for the turbo bike has me on pins and needles because yeah. like I've already gave Mike um cash, like a significant amount of cash to to at least put a dent into what I've got to pay him. So but I have no idea. Yeah. So I'm like I I'm very like I said, I'm the best word to say is just terrified. Yeah. Um I don't know. I might can make some stuff work. I, I randomly went and bought one of those massaging guns um mm -hmm. that you you had. Mm -hmm. I bought that sun Sunday? When did I text you about it? Regardless. Sunday or Monday. I'll, yeah, I went and got that thing, and I didn't get the Pro. Um, but holy shit. Like, I, yeah. that was that was worth it. Yeah. So. No, they're, they're fucking awesome. They're absolutely awesome. They hit, they, like, like, don't get me wrong, you still need to do, like, you know, human hand massaging, too, but, like, they hit points that, you know, in my opinion, those guns really come into play with someone when you're by yourself because it's just you can do shit that you just you physically can't put your body in pain. Like it's weird. It's almost like, hey, I know this part of my forearm really, really hurts. Let me dig my finger into it to massage this knot out. And you get about halfway into it, you're like, eh, it's about as much as I can go. When you damn well can go harder, but your body just stops you. It's like your body All is right. naturally trained to not self mutilate. But all right, first off, uh, Hunter. Uh, Kiss my ass. I am cheap. I don't understand. I don't, I cannot get my head around it, but yes, I will buy an exhaust and it makes sense to me before I will a camera. Um, well, hold on. I don't know. Let me show you. It's going to take a second, but hold on. Oh, but yeah, I mean, um, damn, I don't even know exactly what you're, oh yeah. The, uh, see, I can't, I can work on some parts, but like I have really bad, like, like knots in my back that I can't get out. So that being able to just being able to throw that up there and get to it, it's like, oh, this is nice. Mm. So yeah, yeah, it's cool. I'm in a corner though. It's not gonna track me anywhere. I guess it could look what yeah. I just did. Look what I just did and it's actually fast too. Yeah, you can set this the try the chase speed. Really? Yeah. All right, I'll fucking <laughs> order one. God damn it. But the, <laughs> I'm laughing at myself, sadly. Um, the, the funny part about it, though, is that I don't even, it, that's just like a weird, like, cool kind of gimmicky feature. 
But like the reality is, is that it's a two hundred hundred dollar camera that's so small and tiny and not at all anywhere on the in, in my way, and it's super high quality. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Jesus Christ! All right, so I've got to spend money. Um, I guess I am working overtime this weekend, and um, yeah, cool, great, yeah, more more money to spend. Fuck. Well, look at it like this though: the <laughs> GoPro you're currently using, you can sell. That is true, because I honestly do not use this thing at all. It no, stays no. on a tripod. Yeah, do you even have another GoPro besides this one? Because you have the no. Insta, so yeah, you can go full Insta. Boom. Yeah. Next next week will be a, a you know, Insta anybody, 360 promotion featuring Dude Mungus. Does anybody know what a... I think that's a nine. Nine's good. Yeah, does anybody know what that goes for? <laughs> In my opinion, nine through 12 are like not even worth arguing about in terms of which is better or not. They're all, I just they're, meant what they what they would resell for. Yeah, I got one on the market. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's shit. Just, Cause I'll like, I'm anyway, we can talk more about that. Next, we'll, we'll save all the camera talk for next week. Get yourself, go to Best Buy. No, no, sorry. Go on Amazon, Amazon and order one of these things. I got oh, mine in one day. Somebody asked something. I don't know if he's still in here on podcast. He asked what's a good 6130 time stock wheelbase and, and honestly, I can't even answer that. I just didn't want him to think we were not answering him, which, because he looked like a new person. I don't remember his um, name popping up. 3-6. Yeah. On a Jigsaw. Let's yeah. go for it. That, there's so. so many factors in that. It's like, anyway. <laughs> right, right, right. All right, fellas, uh, or people. I don't know who's watching this shit. It's but, fellas. Um, Let's be real. Come on. <laughs> that is that is true. Nobody's watching us. Uh, no females are just randomly watching us. I'm like, oh. Right. Well, you keep losing weight over there. We might get some. Maybe, maybe. Oh, oh. Jesus! All right, guys. Appreciate it. Till next time. All right, sir. I'll talk to you. All right, bud. All right, folks. That was this one. A little more chill one. A little more relaxed. Talking about bullshit, losing weight, all that fun stuff. Um, let me see if this is. Yeah, of course. Best review. Alrighty. But yeah, this camera is absolutely fucking awesome. Uh, highly recommend if any of you guys do any kind of streaming. I keep looking over there, like that's the camera's camera's right there. Um, if you do any kind of streaming, this thing is the balls. Two hundred fifty bucks. It's it's super high end streaming quality. You know, and it's it's so it's. I'm not even kidding when I say it's like this big it is tiny i wish i could just show you but my phone is way bigger anyway guys thank you for being here um i like the idea of having dude mungus on next week so we're gonna do that then and we're gonna probably do an insta promotion without insta promoting us because yeah anyway folks thank you for being here i appreciate it i'll see you next week 9 p.m eastern standard time per usual stay safe have fun and go really really fast bye bye